and well met! I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you one and all to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeons and Dragons broadcast presented by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here to witness our playthrough of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Joining us as always on this special Halloween episode, we have Typhon the Wizard, Rim the Ranger, Persephone the Bard, Falkron the Cleric, Jax the Rogue, and Silas the Paladin Fighter. Some announcements from Lawful Stupid. Shall we take a moment for everybody to show off their costumes? Yes! Alright, we'll start with you there, Jade. Mine is what you see, apart from obviously I'm a bit... I can't turn my green screen on. I don't know if anyone can guess why. So... <laughs> um, but yeah. This is me. Very good. Very can't good. Um, Peter, what have you yes. got to show us today? Um, well, just kind of what you see, Typhon's traveling clothes. Um, I've kind of gone between his um, component pouch, which I imagine being tucked into a bunch of different things on his uh, traveling leathers, and also as a focus caster uh, using a crystal. And then, of course, the uh, rolled up sleeves revealing the serpentine nature that he hey. takes so much Very care nice. to hide. So, yes. Alias Prime, what do you got for us today? Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am Silas Khan, half elf paladin. Uh, I am all decked out in a fully custom made outfit. Every single thing I'm wearing was made, except for this, which was customized. Uh, studs. Nice. Oh, yes. It's uh, it's actually hard to see in the light. This one's silver. This one's bloodied. Yep. Nice. Mm. Start up. Very good. I've got a custom made pendant. The Whoa. symbol of Vandria. Very cool. Beautiful. And when I say custom made, I mean paint. Uh, and if I can uh -oh. navigate it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nice. nice! Oh What's my up? gosh! <laughs> With reach. Very yeah, nice. The Iranian, the moon touched glaive that gives yeah. me reach, and boy, does it. <laughs> awesome. Oh, uh, very nice. Fantastic there, Alias. Um, Yuslin, I should huh? mention that we normally have Rim the Ranger, but uh, Rim the Ranger is currently inhabited by Yuslin the Rogue Warlock. That is correct, um, but we're going with, since she's still in his body, I decided to do him instead of the drow female because I'm too hairy to be in drag. Um, I speak from experience. Um, uh, these <laughs> gloves are made from duct tape. Um, I cannot type in them, so everything I'll do will be a little bit slower tonight. Um, and the mask was purchased, um, but if it gets too cumbersome, uh, I am also decked out in silver oh, paint. I'm so jealous, nice. I can't do that. <laughs> I will be washing this out of my chest hair for the next two months. Um, yeah. What else are we doing, you know? I, right, that's legit. That's legit. And then this is actually a uh, Harry Potter cloak that I am repurposing. <laughs> <laughs> Falcon, would you care to show us your lovely locks? Yeah, yeah. So, so I got my dwarven braids going on here. We've got, let's see, I've got my shield with the holy symbol of Ilmater. I've got Quietus right there for you, singing true. And let's see, I've got one hammer, and then of course, I've got Steve, or how I imagine Steve to be, always at my back there. Uh, and then uh, the most important uh, feature of all is uh, my drinking mug. So there it is. <laughs> Fantastic. I noticed you got a backpack on the back for me as well. Oh yeah, I've also got my jackpack. Yes. <laughs> Jack. Jack. It's even green. It's even green. <laughs> it's so easy. Stephanie? But true to form, there's probably no food in it. No. Oh, no. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Oh. No pasta. No pasta. <laughs> Persephone, <laughs> what can we see? Well, I have my studded leather armor and, you know, just the classic Shakespeare actor shirt. I have the... Oh, I do have a cloak of, of dimension door on, but... It's stuck under my office wheeled chair. Hold on. There we go. 
There we go. Very nice. Well, that's that's... Ready to get used today. Have my <clears throat> loot ready to go. <laughs> and also my dagger, which no matter how fancy a sword Sean gives me, will somehow continue to try and outperform. I hate that dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, unless you haven't already guessed, I am Lulu the Holophant in all of her sparkly, circusy <laughs> joy. But you know what? I think it will be too difficult to continue the game wearing this mask. So I'm going to go That's ahead fair. and take this off. Before I continue. Hey! Oh, <laughs> I, I had a sudden feeling. Ow. I thought, oh, base got something underneath that. I knew it. There we are. <laughs> That's a little better. Oh, wow. Everything's I mean, so much brighter. Did anybody suggest that? Someone clip that. I hope so. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sure it was somebody else's idea, and I just stole it. But uh, anyway, my friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time, Conscript Group 14 said goodbye to the fallen city of El Terrell, leaving behind Grand Duke Ravenguard and Rhea Mantlemorn, their companion through many adventures. With a literal leap of faith, they plunged from the floating city and, with the help of magic, floated away and down onto the surface of Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells. Following the directions of Lulu the Holophant, they made their way toward the distant hill known as Fort Knucklebone. As they traveled, the oppressive heat and the malevolent power of Avernus bore down upon them. They passed through a large drift field of bones and fought off two juggernauts made of dozens of skeletons. Finally, with some of them exhausted to the point of collapse, Conscript Group 14 reached Fort Knucklebone. Within its walls of twisted metal, bones, and trash, they met Mad Maggie and her crew of strange and vicious miscreants. Maggie offered to help Lulu recover some memories in exchange for a chance to experience and share in the suffering she expected it to cause. While she prepares the ritual, Conscript Group 14 rests around a meager fire. But for one of their number, Rest is a distant memory. Rim. You lie in a cavern made of dark iron, garnished with reddish streaks of corrosion. You've lost track of what is real and what is a dream. In here, it doesn't seem to matter. There's a snarl from the cavern entrance and you can see two figures silhouetted against a wildly reeling maelstrom of silent lightning and black clouds. One is in the shape of a hulking feline, fur bristling and muscles clenched to pounce. The other is a humanoid form fumbling with a bow and arrow. Stay back, child, the figure says. And you recognize the voice of Beriothian. What do you do? Um, I this is a this is a memory from my childhood. Um, I am going to uh, charge. I'm going to charge the cat and uh, unleash a blast of ice to protect the man with the bow. You inhale. Feel the cold power gathering in your lungs. But as you are about to expel it, you choke, and nothing comes out. The beast leaps over you, landing on Barothian, tearing him to shreds, as you are helpless. I, I, uh, oh God, uh... I mean, I mean, I, I, through tears, I try to run to the cat and try to push the cat off of my father. 
you move towards the cat and immediately the, the scene changes yet again and you stop as you realize that you are creeping down a hallway towards a prison cell. Again, everything around you is made from that same dark iron. It's sickly corrosion streaking across the floor and up the bars separating you from your goal. Lying on the cold floor, you see Beriothi and his eyes wide and feverish. My son, what are you doing here? Father, I don't know where I am. The gods will hear any moment. You must leave. What foolishness is this? Uh, he's going to immediately try to break the bars uh, that are that are that have his father trapped. You go reach the bars, but there's no strength in your arms. You look down and these muscles that have served you so well, they're weak. They're drained. This place, it sucked the life out of you. You have nothing. Guards come around the corner. They push you aside with no more than a thought. They grab your arm, your father's arms, and they drag him away to be executed. And yet again, you are helpless. Rim is trying to keep track of the passage of time. He's not sure what is real and what is not real, but with every vision that he has, um, he makes a claw mark into his scales to try to keep track of how long he's been trapped. You look down at your scales to make a claw mark and all you see is claw marks. Claw mark after claw mark after claw mark. Dozens, tens of dozens. You barely have room for another mark. You are standing in a room with a single bed and simple furnishings. Once again, everything around you, even the pitcher and cup on a nearby table, is made from black, horrible, pulsating iron. You can see the red power moving through it like striations in marble. On the bed, his face a horrible grimace of pain, lies Beriothian. He reaches up for you. His eyes barely able to focus. I wish I had never left the Lister. This is my memory of his actual passing. And I, uh, I, I run to him to hold him. As you touch him, he crumbles away like dusty ash. Stepping towards you in this darkness is a robed form with a long beard. With each step, the metal at his feet shrieks and moves away, white hot and molten. As it cools, it takes on a dark silver sheen that gleams with an inner light. The figure reaches out a hand to you. It is Papa Tarragon. Hello again, Rim. How fare you this day? Please, end my suffering. I cannot endure these visions any longer. Mm. Your soul is trapped in a horrible place of torment. I can restore you, as I have restored you many times. But the torment will continue. You will endure it over and over. I can deliver you from this. Once again, I offer you the chance. Come with me to my castle on the slopes of Mount Celestia. Will you take me up on this offer? Or will you once again Continue your fight. Are my friends still struggling for the soul of El Terrell? They do. They struggle for El Terrell and more. Is there a chance 
that I may aid them once again. Of course, Rim. Rim takes a deep breath and he holds his claws to his chest and he tries to gather his courage and he says, then I will continue to fight. Bless me with the courage to withstand these trials. I do, and you shall. And he touches you, and you are restored. Memories of these visions fading away like nightmares and dreams. You lie in a cavern made of dark iron, garnished with reddish streets of corrosion. You've lost track of what is real and what is a dream. In here, it doesn't seem to matter. As the cycle continues, we will leave Rim to his suffering within the soul coin. As for the rest of you, you continue to enjoy the hospitality of Mad Maggie at Fort Knucklebone. Through the night, you have kept your watch. Occasionally, the redcaps and madcaps come close, probably with mischief on their mind, but they do not harm you. And they do not come close enough to disturb your rest. Surprising, but welcome. You all enjoy the benefits of a long rest. And you awaken after eight hours. What would you like to do? Um, I wanted to ask quick, John, uh, mm -hmm. as Eastland, um, when, when the madcaps were kind of mocking Mickey, um, yeah. Mickey has like, Mickey is walking like he's in pain. Yeah. He's... He walks with a limp, very, a uh, uh, pronounced limp indeed. Um, Eastland is going to gesture to, uh, Typhon to join her and, um, okay. He, she's going to uh, look at Mickey and say, are you in pain? Mickey. Mickey. Uh, which, he's limping. Uh, which foot is he stepping tenderly on? He seems to be favoring his left foot as if there's something something about it that doesn't seem right it's either not long enough or too long or it could actually be in pain the left foot you yes. say, is it, okay mickey lift up your left foot mm. he lifts up his left foot slowly i kind of look around the foot the ankle um make a uh, medicine check. Okay. Start out with a shoot. A seven. seven. Anyway, I could add my intelligence modifier to that. Are you not proficient in medicine? I am, but it's wis It's the wisdom check. I was wondering if I could make a sort of intelligence-based medical examination as opposed to, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a medicine check is a medicine check, I'm afraid. Um, okay. It appears that there is something wrong with the foot, but you are not able to determine whether it is a problem in the construction of this strange creature, or mm -hmm. if it is due to some sort of outward influence. Sure. Is there a obvious wound? I was saying because it says discern, deter, discern from the appearance of a wound what kind of weapon dealt it, was kind of where I was going with it. Doesn't appear to be a wound. Okay. 
Hmm. Well, shame on you, Doctor. Is there anyone else in the group that can take a look at him? I feel like assisting Mickey would be money in the bank with Maggie. I had noticed he was in pain as well. M Mickey, may I? He takes Not a couple familiar of steps towards you. Particular anatomy. Yeah. But I think it has to do with that leg. Let's find out. Uh, six, ah, 16. There appears to be a very, very small slit in his foot. It's difficult to see. It's sort of uh, disguised by uh, some thick pachyderm-like skin that it makes up this limb um, that is... Uh, and within one of the folds of the skin, there is there is a little, small sliver of bone. Oh. Looks like a splinter. This does not appear to be part of the creature's construction. Something right. that is... You may have stepped on. M Mickey, mm. you, have, you have a sliver in your leg. I'm going to remove it. Ah. It's going to hurt, but it's going to be, it'll make you feel better. All right? Mm. So, mm. make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So will Mater go with me and an eight? <laughs> uh, I'm going. I'm going to try as well, uh, if I may, Sean. He I'm steps going to, away from you, just sort of limps away. I'm going to bah. grab grab him by the shoulders and look at his <laughs> eyes. It, 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 she's she's, uh, she's holding on to him and say, "This will ease your suffering. You will not have to deal with the madcaps anymore." Uh, I make a persuasion check at disadvantage. Oh, okay. Unless somebody wants to help you. Somebody help me. Uh, I can't use oh, the I'll help, but well, okay, that works. <laughs> I was gonna say, can I use a slight hand to sort? I was gonna say, can I? I was, I was gonna oh, ask if I true. could. I, if I could have Jax, well, <laughs> it's like Jax, get the sliver out of his lung. Actually, oh, that's, that's a look. better idea, because I've got a good sleight of hand. I yeah. can try it. Somebody distract him. I will, I will aid uh, easily. <laughs> Amazing. Still a 16. With a Not natural a one <laughs> on the die. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's Look insane. at a 16 on a natural one. Unreal. Yeah. Did, was I able easily to has, uh, So as long as somebody's able to successfully distract Mickey... That is definitely uh, good enough for her to yank the bit of bone out of his foot. So who will distract him? Mickey. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look no. At me. Look at her. Look at her. Look. Hey, Look at her. hey, hey, mm. hey. Who is the biggest, who is, who is the biggest boy here? Are you the biggest boy? Who's you the biggest? see the wheels beginning to turn. <laughs> it's just like, who is the biggest boy here? Mm -hmm. It's you, isn't it? You the boy. And with that, <laughs> he yells out, and it echoes throughout Fort Knucklebone. But he turns around and tries to swipe into Eastland, but you're able to get out of the way. And he... Isn't that better? Um, and he opens his mouth and this tongue-like tentacle thing begins to extrude from his mouth and sort of curl around his head and come out and it reaches out and sort of pats you, Islin, <laughs> before going back onto his shoulder. And he begins to walk around and around you can hear the cries of the madcaps and the redcaps as they're bitterly disappointed. Oh no, how are we gonna get to do the Mickey now? Yeah, you ruined Mickey. He was fun. Now he's just boring. Yeah, put it back. <laughs> can I get them yet? 
Very likely Not yet. soon. Get it though, Jax. I want to gut him too. <laughs> and uh, you have aided Mickey the Flesh Golem. What else would you like to do? Turn that flesh golem into a friend golem. <laughs> and I'm done for the night. All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> As you are over there. So Mickey hangs out in this area on the um, left side of the map here. Sort of walks back and forth. Appears to be guarding this cavern. And this is where you saw Mad Maggie retire to um, the uh, the green flaming skull that you saw went into this small hut over here. This is the hut that has the jars of pickled things um, and the rest of these uh, appear to be just spare tents and such. Um, there are spare parts sort of scattered around a couple of um, crates of useless odds and ends. Um, they don't appear to get much use, probably because nobody here really needs to sleep. Hmm. And as you are walking away from dealing with Mickey, you see Chuka and Clank still working on this contraption and crowing at each other. What's Go the see what they're working on? Yeah. yeah. Um, it is a three, a, a four wheeled, um, a four wheeled buggy like device. It's got horns and such sticking out of it. And the back, it has a strange sort of uh, device that looks like it's meant to hold something. It's, a, it's like a an aperture with a chain hanging down from it. Um, at the moment, it's just a chain, but it, looking at the reinforcement and such on the uh, aperture and around where it connects to the the uh, vehicle, it looks like it could probably withstand a decent amount of weight. And they are just crowing back and forth at each other. It looks like Conk is the one who does most of the work in the inside and Chuka's at the bottom sort of dancing from one foot, pointing at things and making making uh, squawking noises. Does this thing work? Can you travel with it? Or is it pulled by something? That's a question, all right. Problems, problems. The world runs on problems. And he right. points at it. It makes a, a uh, I don't know sort of gesture. It's not working. Nods his head. Spikes! Get them heads upon them, spikes! Well, not in this condition, I imagine not. Problems, problems. The world runs on problems. It's fascinating. Could I look at the inside? And then he holds up a hand, looks at you, looks at your robe, looks at your uh, your hands. Mm. Hmm, kind of like a baby with a ballista. Well, even toddlers have their toys, right? Maybe I can just look a little. He makes a go right ahead gesture. And the uh, the larger one looks down at you, stands up and goes, points at himself. The one over there is named Chuka. Hello, Chuka. Might if I have a look inside this thing. I am fascinated to know what makes these things go. That's a question, all right. 
And he steps back, lets you look down. So, as you look at this, you see it is a combination of things mechanical. Uh, you see a few things that look like they have runes scraped on them that might be of magical uh, origin. Mm -hmm. Tubes, um, tanks, gears, levers. There seems to be a place for one person to sit uh, and have some cover and a couple other places that people can sort of hang around. And it looks like this aperture on the back actually has a place for somebody to sit and work it as if it is a, uh, maybe like a, a weapon on a ship. Hmm. But you are able to examine it if you wish. I would like the guests. I would like to. Um, so, uh, Arcana or Investigation, your choice. Okay. Betty picks Arcana. I'm gonna go, mm -hmm. They're the same for me, believe it or not. Oh. But I'm going Is to... anybody else uh, hanging out here with Typhon looking at this? I'm yeah. standing in the back and just making sure that the uh, the bird creatures don't change their mind and attack him, but I have no oh, skill thanks. on either of those, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to watch from a distance. Can I sit on it? My I'm going to use my inspiration for this. Oh, very good. 24 very on good. my Arcana oh. So, you spend about 10 minutes looking at this, and based on how you know the weave to work, if this is indeed some sort of engine or device that runs on magic, there will need to be a even flow going throughout the entire uh, system of the vehicle, uh, sort of uh, distributing the energy to the wheels and to the various parts of it that need to work. You are able to see that there is a gear that is comprised of spikes that look like it's actually made of bones from some sort of creature. So it's a gear made of actual organic material. Um, and it is sort of pulsating and surging with an energy that you're able to, with your arcana check, sort of reach out and feel. Um, it does not seem to be uh, mm, functioning with this machine in the way it should be. Like it doesn't actually belong there, or like it is sort of out of whack? Like... So the gear looks like it should belong there. This energy that it's pulsing with, it should not be. This is what is causing the problem. A, the gear, a gear of some sort clearly needs to be there. Um, it fits perfectly into this spot and you can see hmm. the way it's supposed to work. But this energy yes. that it's, it's pulsing with is, um, is disrupting the overall function of the machine. Chuka. There seems to be some problem with that particular gear. Look at the energy around it. It's that's this causing an imbalance. At least it's how I imagine this type of contraption should work. Problems, you problems. The world runs on problems. Shakes his head. Sighs, puts a hand on it, and rubs it. Runs faster than a devil with diarrhea. Do you have a way of removing that energy? That's a question, all right. Would you like me to try? Few souls get to experience my gratitude. I think that's a yes. That's the clearest answer he's given. <laughs> now you're friends with Mad Maggie, yes, or? Can't keep the boss waiting! Indeed. Uh, we would be, well. Well, let's put it this way. There's something that we need as well. I'd be more than happy to take care of this for you, but there's something specific we are looking for. Uh, well. 
a place for everything and everything in its place. Would fixing this be worth a soul coin? What a deal! Hmm. He raises an eyebrow and then he points at the machine and you can see there's a little slot next to the, what do you assume to be the steering mechanism for this machine? Mm -hmm. um, and the soul coin that you've seen looks like it um, it's just the right width to fit within this slot. He points, points at it. I do believe that's how this machine is powered, dear. Keep an eye on Jax. Why? <laughs> Should I have a look inside to see if there's one in there? Ah. Uh, uh, Probably not, but I just... No. Well. Can I ride on it yet? Uh, just... Uh, the way I understand this, and the reason I need looked for you in panic is because if... I believe if you inserted that coin, we would be using Rim's soul as fuel. I would never do that, and I haven't got it anymore. Right. Well, we can never really be sure of that, can we? <laughs> uh, now fine for a soul coin make the machine work again they look at them look at each other <sighs> that's a question all right sounds very non-committal but if you don't think it's going to tax you or hurt you it might not be bad to give it a try. Okay. Ah. Clonk looks at you as you're about to go. He goes, "It's a fine day for staying alive." Ah. Maybe not then. Looks at you, then gives you a go-ahead sort of. Do I feel like dispel <laughs> magic would work? on this to nullify the make an arcana check okay uh 14 14 it is magic um it's difficult to know how powerful it is since it doesn't seem to be based in any kind of a spell but it's possible all right i will expend a spell slot to do so I'll All try right. it. All right. Dispel magic has been cast. You cast it upon this piece and you watch as the disruptive energy sputters and winks out. And as you step back, Clonk looks at it and bangs on it with his fist and there's a and it's a sort of a, a rumbling sort of growling sound but on top of it you can hear the sound of something in horrible pain just it seems to be coming from deep within the depths of this machine what a deal what a deal what a deal Few souls get to experience my gratitude. Clean up time! Clean up time! And Chuka and Klonk are dancing back and forth, and they come and they, they sort of grab you by your shoulders and they bob the heads up and down. They're very happy. My guy first. Kind of like a baby with a ballista. Eastlin is smiling, uh, but she's still kind of keeping her distance from the birds. They seem to be willing to let you try, Jax. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh. Where's the go button? One of them takes a feathered feathered hand and sort of points to a, a, a lever. I'm going to pull it. And then, and then, and then <laughs> Chuka comes up to you and says, 
looks at looks at Typhon, looks back at you, runs faster than a devil with diarrhea. I don't I know didn't. what diarrhea is. It's all good. <laughs> Upon hearing uh, the machine start up and start screaming and realizing that Jax is no longer in the group nearby us, um, I'm making a hasty walk over towards the machine. <laughs> you see Jax, his eyes barely coming above the little shield that it's been. He's just like, like this. And he's got these huge levers in his hand and a sort of a steering mechanism on the front. And he's clutching things and pushing them. And the two Kenku are kind of watching, sort of making a calling kind of laughing sounds. Uh, and investigate which button makes it go. Sure, roll an investigation check. Oh God, please get a one. <laughs> As he's doing that, Silux looks over at Typhon and says, Typhon, what is it that powers these machines again? It would seem to be the very soul coins that we found before. So we likely have a source of one. What does that mean for Jack starting this one? It has Rims. already been started. But point of order, it is, it is in idle. Although you would have no way of knowing that. Jack didn't start it as well. So uh, the 16, you are pretty sure you know how to make this thing go. Do you Someone want to go forward or him. backwards? <laughs> yes, Chuka Clonk, you should... Uh, he might need a co-pilot for the first round, just in case. Chuka nods up and nods. A place for everything and everything in its place. And climbs up and sits down right next to you, Jax. And points to a couple of things. And you, you put it in reverse and... <laughs> It backs up and then it drives over to the entrance. And so long, suckers. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. There is a you place for you to jump on if you wish, Falcon. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get stuck in the window again. Uh, okay. I'm off to get All the right. Walmart delivery. So you jump on. There's a place where you can put your your hand on a handle and like put your put your foot on a um on a secure space. And Chuka looks back at you and nods. Okay. And um, <laughs> he puts it straight down. And off you go, just <laughs> with a screaming sound as this large dune buggy like machine with these horns and dark infernal metal. All running takes off out of Fort Knuckle Fort Knucklebone amidst the cackling laughter and cries of the madcaps and the uh redcaps and <laughs> away Jax and Falkron go. I look to Kron which one's the, the weapons you button? I think you're right, Silas. I know what you're hinting at, and yes. I'm just concerned if that thing is powered by soul coins and there isn't one on board, then what power is it at that point? Well, I believe when I investigated, there was some residual power within the machine. It was simply unbalanced. I don't... It looks like there is a specific place to insert a soul coin for it to be fueled. You're concerned about... Oh, Rim's coin gets nowhere near there. It is safely in my pack. Yeah, it's wanted to be. Have you checked it recently? Thing. Is it? I I look in the bag, but I <laughs> I have put it in a in a compartment that if Jax wanted to try to take it out again, um, it would be very difficult. It was under things. It's tucked behind things. Can, can you check anyway? <laughs> <laughs> But I, I will look. I will look. To yeah, it is. It is there where you left it. I have not received any instructions to the contrary, so there is no reason why it would not be where you left it. And I have made it that clear right, to... Jax. Is it? Right I have made it clear to the goblin that inserting this particular coin would most certainly destroy Rim's soul forever. Now, it would surprise me if he made that mistake, but. Well, he's surprising. <laughs> no faith. There's no faith in this group for Jax. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you drive, um, 
I got on the buggy. <laughs> hey, you got on the buggy. Falkron and J Jax and Chuka are off for a joyride. Chuka points <laughs> to the mounds of white bone that you came through um, the day before. Oh, we killed them ones. Is there more? He points. Okay. I'll drive in What a direction. deal! Wait, yeah. wait, where are we going? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this can only end badly. <laughs> it's a fine day for staying alive! As you uh, drive into these drifts of bones and you now see that these tracks that have been through here were clearly caused by this machine or machines like it. And as you drive through it, you're able to go fast enough to go up onto large banks. You're able to jump over hills and have quite a joyride experience. However, I'm going to need you to make a couple of rolls. Oh, bless it, Ilmater. <laughs> you have three tricks ahead of you. There is one of moderate difficulty, one of uh, severe difficulty, and one of near impossible difficulty. What would you like to go for, Jack? Oh, near impossible, yes. No. <laughs> right, so there's uh, a large jump that appears to uh, take up about 40 feet, um, and it's a, 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 a ramp that you have to go up and then catch some air. When you come down the other side, you have to Chuck, uh, turn the wheel hard to the side, juke to the side, otherwise you'll crash into a huge wall, uh, hillside made of uh, spiky, dangerous looking bones. And Chuka <laughs> looks at his spikes! Get them heads nope. upon them spikes! Nope. Okay. Um, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> roll an roll um, acrobatics or athletics check. Your choice, Jadix. Oh, acrobatics. Is there, obviously, as we're approaching, is there anything coming from uh, from Falcon crying out? Uh, Falcon is just crying out. Falcon, do you have anything you want to do? Oh, no, I like, no. The minute oh, no. I see oh, a no. the minute he veers to the jump and the spike wall, I am like scrambling up the car to try to get up to him to see All if right. I can wrestle the wheel, gear, lever. <laughs> uh, make, a, make an attack. Um, so a, uh, like a grapple check. I was thinking so more yeah. of guidance. <laughs> yeah, athletics. That's what I was saying too. So he's coming to make an. Uh, you, so you really want you want to grapple Jax out of the seat? I, I would love to not take the insane drive, but well, I was. I guess. Oh God, Shank, is it feasible that I could get there in time and stop the vehicle? Or am I just putting it in greater danger of like spinning out of control? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, meanwhile, as I, I roll uh, that roll, Pixie's just donated 500 bits. Hey, Pixie. So, let's all Thank roll you, for Pixie. inspiration quickly. <laughs> Thank you very much, right. Pixie. So, yeah, please, God. Let's this roll is for the first time I don't want it. Yeah. I rolled right. a two. Hardcore bone core. All right. Is that everyone? Yep, definitely didn't get it. Oh man! Oh man! It looks like Jack's won it then. Oh my god! Yeah, looks like Jack's won it. Thank you very much, Pixie. And I think you by donating it, you want me to roll with inspiration, so I will use that right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, no. Before you roll, we need to see whether or not Fal so Falkren cast guidance. So yeah. All so right. yeah. So Falkren, like she like scrambles up, gets to the seat, and is like. She just puts fun. the hand on him, and if she feels the, he feels the the divine guidance kind of go into him, and she's just like, oh, god. All right, roll it there, Jax. And, you heard uh, him. Today's to a good four. day to die. The shiny red button, the candy apple like red button. <laughs> so it's a fifteen, a nineteen. All right. A dirty twenty. Roll a d four. A dirty twenty is. <laughs> exactly the dc to oh. pull off this little trick oh, so uh, jacks revs this engine that has a nice throaty oh, no, 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 underneath it but then on top of it just yes. the absolute horrifying scream of a creature in terrible pain and 
he and begins to go up the side of this uh, mound of bones and Chuka is like ah, ah kind of like a baby with a ballista <laughs> and they jump over and you hear this from Falkron as they soar through the air, land. Jax immediately jukes the steering wheel to the side and it spins out going three times around before stopping inches away from the spikes. And then- There'll be no living with him now. Down the hill he goes. Amazing, an amazing feat, considering he could barely see over the dash. What happened? <laughs> you did great. Take us back to Knucklebone. I don't wanna die! Chuka, a place for everything and everything in its place. <laughs> <laughs> Nodding up and down. Should we do it again? Clean nope. up time! Clean up time! Oh, okay. I'll start driving backwards then. But thanks to Pixie, we've now got to roll twice again for two more inspirations. Oh, boy. Thank you oh. very much, Pixie. To oh, goodness. Thanks Thank you, Pixie. Alive. We couldn't do this without you, Pixie. Yeah, no, literally, we could not Pixie's have done this Pixie's without... basically Jax's babysitter with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for Stephanie is Wait. winning so far. For... Oh, oh, Falcon! Falcon wins the first one. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. So we need to roll one We get to roll time, again? Guys, yeah. Oh, that, uh, I had two rolls. Oh, you've done twice, yeah? But 10 was my second one. Ooh. So. 17 looks good. Whoa. Oh no, oh no. Looking good. Oh no. Man, I've got the same luck with getting these rules as I do with keeping a goddess. Jeez. <laughs> like Is that me? DM Is wins that me? It. Yeah, DM wins it. Thank you, Pixie. Oh no. Oh, no. 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 Halloween thing. So it's a good bad. episode to have inspiration. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? 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 <laughs> oh dear. Alrighty. What would the rest of you do like to do while you have seen your cleric and your goblin zip out the front door in this machine? I have no idea. I think we were all watching quite. Yeah. Right. So they enthralled. They they drive out, and uh, after a few minutes, you lose sight of them. There's just a plume of dust in the distance. I just want to add that chat in zoom chat we've got people screaming to ryan to stop him <laughs> <laughs> to stop him to do what is that what okay <laughs> i couldn't for some reason i couldn't see any of the ch i saw that the chats were coming up but i couldn't find where people were actually speaking i guess i just lost it it's okay if there was something After in there we're people. seeing we'd let you know oh i appreciate yeah. that yeah. When, when someone when someone other than a you know a deceitful body stealing dark elf bitch does something, you know, we'll let you know. Oh, yeah, I like that was, that was my shot for the night. <laughs> I really feel. Just because just because she's honoring her host, the parasite that rides Rim. That sounds inappropriate. <laughs> Are you, let me There's see a joke in there with Rim <laughs> with Rim and Ride. There's oh, a joke dear. somewhere in there. But um, I'm not going to touch it. This stream is for uh, 18 and up, just in case we didn't mention that. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, it is now. So, again, um, is there anything anybody else wishes to do? Perhaps pray? S <laughs> Silas. The, uh, the minutes drag into sets of minutes, oh. which drags okay. into an hour. No sign of Jackson, Falkron, and um, Chuka. Pressing buttons to see if it's got any weapons. Silas, in your opinion, to destroy an evil being on behalf of another evil being, is it a net positive for the balance you seek? I don't care about balance. Demons kill demons every day. Devils kill devils every night. It does nothing to advance the cause of good. Interesting. There will always be another villain waiting to stand up, Typhon. Wasn't it your job to knock them back down? Isn't that what? You're it's not exactly with... my job, Typhon, but I will do it. 
Hi. I'm not destructive, Typhon. I don't want to kill everything I see. Certainly I'm not something not. that... I'm not trying to run around smiting first and asking questions later. I simply have loyalty to friends that have shown loyalty to me. I see. Uh, oh. And my question is, well, more about how we're going to survive this and accomplish what we need to and what you would be willing to do or where you would draw the line in exercising your martial prowess or liberally or should I say carefully applying the might of your goddess when the situation deems I'm not going to strike Islin down for no reason if you're concerned about her I simply I... want to get so you speak of lines. I draw straight lines. We want to go from point A to point B. Whatever will get us there, Typhon. Very good. I appreciate this reasoning. And you're right, I am concerned for her, but that was not what that is not what I was asking about. I don't want to feed goblin to the machines either. Mm, neither was that. But we, we might have another opportunity to curry favor with one of the closer servants of Mad Maggie. But it simply requires the vanquishing of what seems to be a very evil, destructive being. Yes. So? If currying favors from Mad Maggie perhaps gets us what we need, would you? Is that a straight enough line for you? I would just ask you, Typhon, whatever it is that you do personally, keep safe yourself at any moment. There's at least one demon that could show up that would be very aggressive on taking something from me. Currying favor is one thing, Typhon. Please don't make any deals. I don't want to lose you. I'm touched. And... To be completely forthright, I was going to tell Jax to do it. To do what? I f fill him in to the request of the uh, imps. Oh, he knows. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well. Just trying to make you say it out loud, Typhon. Putting the, uh, pointing the knife in the right direction, let's call it. In this situation, Typha, normally I would volunteer. However, the means that I would employ might draw the wrong kind of attention in this place. Mm, I wholeheartedly agree. I was not trying to, well, uh, press gang you into this particular task. I was seeking your approval. Silas, for the plan I had laid out, letting you in on it. Perhaps we've kept too many things from each other that have led to some unpleasant circumstances, so here it is. Perhaps not the most honest plan, but well, here we are. And Rim's very soul is at stake. To save Rim, let us do what must be done. I do not worship Helm nor Torm. Vandriaga Madrith. 
the shortest line between two points, Typhon. And I will grieve after. This is the way of Vandria. All right, anybody else have anything they wish to discuss? Or anybody in the fort they wish to talk to? Persephone, this uh, has been interested and observed of everything that's around her, but she is still exhausted. So she's kind of just been cool in her heels. Every now and then you hear the sounds of anger and complaints as Mickey walks by carrying something and putting it down and is walking with a nice smooth gait and you hear all the red caps and mad caps complaining that they can't make fun of him anymore and they shake their fists at you all and every now and then a piece of trash comes flying over to where you all are resting and before long on the horizon <laughs> You see Jax and Chuka and Falkran returning on the contraption with a loud sort of <laughs> that sort of has a sobbing quality to it as uh, Jack applies the choke and slows down and skids into Fort Knucklebone with a huge cloud of ash and dust. And you see Chuka is feathers sticking out wildly falcon similarly distressed falcon shit both, itself, herself <laughs> both climb shakily off this machine i did not shit myself i can smell it it must but be the I bird did then not. you do that again <sighs> nice job Jax. nice job we did a big Rollback. jump who's we next Really uh, I don't know that we continue to play with that toy right now. No, I think we're done with the scream machine for today. Maybe we just oh, well, take was, I thought that was you screaming. No, it's definitely Chuka. Clean up time. <laughs> <laughs> Jax, I have an idea that's going to be even more fun than this. Oh, okay. I think you should listen to Typhon, Jax. I think you want to hear what he has to say. Oh, I said okay. <laughs> kind of try to uh, look around and I don't know if Eastland's here or not, but ask her to kind of keep an eye out too so we're not overheard. I didn't hear anybody having any specific plans, so you can have anybody nearby yeah. that you wish to have. Yeah, I didn't imagine we were keeping this from anyone, but okay, no sure. one spoke up Eastland from the leans, party. So. Eastland leans into you and she says, I'll voice my concern again, dear. I do think this is one we might want to check with Maggie before we exact our plan. Hmm. If you As... want to go through with it, I will trust you, but those are imps, not ravens. Oh, yes, I'm aware. But they, when she came out, they were on her shoulders, right? Yes, they were they on were. her shoulders as yeah. as ravens, and you saw them fly over to you all and then take the form of ravens, uh, of imps. Pins and needles are their names. Hmm. Well, Falkran very oh, shakily tries that. to get off the buggy, and she's like, has, has anyone... Your, your, your hand is like get a death grip on the thing. Sort of <laughs> pry it off. Has anyone seen Maggie yet? Are we? Are we? Can we go? <laughs> you have not seen hide nor hair I of don't Maggie. Die. So, Great. oh my gosh, Pixie again too. Yeah, oh, she to do it now. Unreal. Goodness. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pixie. That's a healing potion and inspiration. And an inspiration. inspiration. Is this a G6 Sean inspiration? No, it's a D20. Yeah. So if you've already got it, you don't need to roll. All right. Healing so potion. I'm going to go ahead and roll the healing potion. A 19. That is a normal healing potion. And it appears in... 
<laughs> Feels in Falkron's pack. Huzzah! Uh, looks That's like good. Typhon won the D20 uh, inspiration. Uh, Thank you very much, Pixie. Pixie. And she needs to go to sleep, so sleep have a well, good Pixie sleep, Pixie. Yes. Thank you very much for the bits. Good. Right. Pixie's going to sleep. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, she sleep well, Pixie. Pixie. what the DM does with all that inspiration to us. Yeah. Sleep well, Pixie. Uh, See you later. So, over the course of time we've been here, does it seem like these seem just sort of like a. I don't know. Kind of a rabble of it mad is very cats much and red a cats. Rabble. It is very much a rabble. And and uh, make a um, make an insight check. Okay. It's kind of leading towards the um, expendability of any particular mad or red cat. Uh, there are a... quite a few of them. It yeah. would be difficult to. Um, you would assume that if many of them were to be killed, that they would be noticeable, but a few, maybe not. Um, and they don't seem to be taking very good care of each other. Uh, you have seen several fights. Some of them have gotten pretty intense, and the wounds sustained have been beyond just normal scuffles. You've seen some daggers come out. You've seen some uh, missing uh, digits, some cut ears. Um, it's very possible but that that uh, these creatures are in the habit of murdering one, e one another on a fairly regular basis. However, Wazik is this one up here with the blue dot. Looking for it. Oh, there. Okay. And uh, with a 10 insight, um, you are able to see that he travels with a, a group of of these creatures that are nearby him on a fairly regular basis, and he just sort of goes around. It's difficult to see what his duties might be or what any of their duties might be. They're just sort of here. Um, you see them climbing in and amongst the um, trash and detritus of the walls. Every now and then, you see them moving the uh, the ballista. Um, they're kind of making sure everything keeps moving. They're just a presence, sort of crawling all over it like ants. Um, you assume that they're doing chores, but it is difficult to see them doing anything more than just crawling, squabbling, and delighting in the suffering of others. Hmm. Got However, cool. devil and other devil on my shoulder right. here. <laughs> um, <laughs> does anybody have anything? So Typhon is off on this. Is this a decision that you need help making, Typhon? Or kind of? I, you know, and have one on one side. I, I am, um, am concerned about. Uh, you know, he was pretty sure of it, but uh, his most trusted confidant is sort of cautioning against it. So. I'm a little torn as a player and a character. I understand. Go, so. Well, does anybody she's not else trying have... to dissuade you. She's she's just she's just voicing a concern. But if you feel confident about it, aslan has got your back. Got a feeling. Jax, Whoa. would you like to murder a red cap? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, oh, which one? Oh, I think we already know, do we? Yes, but you have to be very, very quiet about it. So his friends don't know it was you. Better yet, if you could make it look like someone else, all the better. We will know it was you. Would you be interested in this? A hundred gold. Put it on my tab. Oh, it's getting... It's getting quite a lot. It's about. It's about. Oh, we've lost someone. It's about 5,000 now. Or is it 500? Did I mess everything up? Sorry about that, everybody. Yep, sorry. We're going to do cameras? Everyone yep, off the cameras. Sure. Sorry. Peter on. Uh, 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 Silas. Yuslin, Falcon, 
What's up, I mean? I think you're up to about 500 gold now, aren't you? Most likely. I'm sure there's a lot of people in El Torel going to owe us quite a lot of money when we get back up, so you can be assured I'll be able to pay it forward. Oh, of course. Hmm. Oh, of course. All right. Shall I go and do it now? Murder on the mind. How will this take place? That's up to you. I'll leave it to your expertise. If there's something I could help you with. You know. Invisibility, perhaps. Though, oh, just like know it. it is going to drop once you stab. Would a distraction be in order? Perhaps, but it may draw everything together. Mm. My only thought is if he gets to a place where he's alone. I think that's the only way it's going to work. And if that's not the case, I don't think it's worth the risk. Oh, maybe Would it also be possible to, to start a fight with him at the center? Now that would be interesting. You mean, point them against one another? One dead madcap, five dead madcaps, what's the difference? Well, too many med dead madcaps might be noticeable as my thought. Sure, but if the fight starts among themselves? As long as we're not implicated. While they're discussing this, Jax, what do you do? Um, I'm just obviously listening, but I'm just watching. I'm watching, watching Wazik. I'm watching his movements, where he goes. Uh, he seems to be pretty in one place for the moment. He is up there with another red cap and a mad cap, and they are busy sort of sighting this ballista up there, moving it back and forth, pointing it at the horizon. I really don't know. I'm. I'm. I don't have any ideas here, friends. So has he? Got, so have all three of them got their backs to me or something at the moment? So at the moment, I'm going to say that you are down on the ground. If you will see here, yeah, and here, and various places along the fingers of this hill, there are ladders that lead up to the top of it. Looks like some sort of plateau on the top of it where there are various, um, just a, you can see some ballista on the very end of the fingers and then further back towards the knuckles of Fort Knucklebone, there are some large trebuchets. Does anybody have any ideas or anything they wanna do? Well, I could easily create a distraction for you, but as Typhon says, that might not be what you want. We've got loads of loads of them on the front as well, aren't we? <clears throat> I'm inexperienced in the nuance of this. Why? Why doesn't Jax just walk up and do it? Could be we're overthinking it. Are there any red caps down on the ground? Um, like, or, or like all the red caps where we they, see they pass through the, the down as I said they're all over this is where there are always some there are sometimes some in the yard there are always some on the walls and there are always some at the very bottom at the very ends of the fingers there are always some manning the trebuchet but then within that you have seen them absolutely everywhere they've been inside every building they have been on every square foot of the the yard um every now and then chuka and clonk squawk and another one like gets kicked out from where they're working on the machine are they would we be able to find you said they're inside every build they've been inside every building but are they so would we be able to get inside one of these tents or something sure by yeah, ourselves the tents Yes, the tents seem to be relatively unused. Um, 
other than the fact that every now and then one of these creatures sort of crawls through and or walks through and squabbles, fighting, picking stuff up, putting stuff down, um, adding stuff, taking stuff. Hey, Mickey. Come over here. Come over here. <laughs> All right, you red cap bastards. I'm bored. So here's what we're going to do. How many of you bet I can beat Mickey in an arm wrestling contest? Contest, contest, wrestling, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, give him weapons, make him fight. Yeah, fight, fight with Mickey. And they all no, start no, no, like not gonna, I'm not gonna throwing fight. stuff at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Bits and pieces of Mickey. sharp metal. <laughs> a bone goes. <laughs> sticks hey, in the ground. hey, hey, I saw that. <laughs> Mickey looks at you. Mm. Oh no, it's a, it's it's a friendly game, Mickey. Trust me. No, don't it's a, arm wrestling. You've done arm wrestling before, right? Hand comes out like lands on your head. <laughs> Just How how tall is Mickey? Mickey is uh let me just check that. He's rather Mickey. large. And and how tall He's is Catherine? No. <laughs> so I I know I know everyone thinks that the your uh, your hair is adorable today, Falkron. How tall are you, Falkron? Oh, I'm like, uh, let's, I, I believe uh, I'm tall for a dwarf, so I'm <laughs> four nine, I think, <laughs> like nine feet tall. Oh, jeez. So she's fought bigger. <laughs> make a uh, make a persuasion check, uh, or actually uh, make a check that you think would be how you are going to convey to Mickey what it is you want to do. How would you convey to a creature with barely enough intelligence to breathe? Ryan, or Falkron, if we, uh, if we demonstrate, perhaps, I could use a performance check to help. Oh. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so let's, so yeah, so uh, Falcon uh, totally plans on taking, a, uh, like, an absolute dive here. She's not actually going to sure. try to actually wrestle a golem. That would be, well, actually, if we wrestle a golem, that'd be No, cool. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, okay, all right. Bad all touch. Right. Bad touch. Right. All right. All right. All right. So, um, uh, but yeah, so, I th okay, so, so Mickey, Mickey, watch. This is, so, arm wrestling. Uh, uh, so, arm wrestling. <laughs> works like this uh persephone if you if come over here all right so this is uh i guess uh, i'll do a performance check and then hopefully persephone I will oh, oh, oh. i did it or, and or, I did. Yeah. oh my god With what, what was 20. that role that, that persephone just what was the oh what yeah was the role? what is that i got a i'm not crit on my uh performance check so i have a 30. so as oh i hate to do this Oh no, she's tired. <laughs> One point of exhaustion, Persephone. Oh, I have to do it that again. That roll is at disadvantage. Oh man! Oh well. It'll still be can good. Somebody, if you can use inspiration to set it off. <laughs> oh god! I, oh, I did the wrong thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, 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 do that. Yeah, Just that's not say. real. Right. <laughs> Fourteen. All right. There. All right. <laughs> so, you felt as you were walking over here, you was like, yeah, I, I. You see how uh, Mickey moves. You're able to sort of puff yourself up in a certain way and move your body in such a contorted way that anybody looking at you would be like, oh, well, yeah, she's she's doing that. That's that's amazing. But as you are walking over to the group, it's the effort to maintain this strange position is just too much for you. And you you end up letting some of it go, but keep enough of it so that you're able to convey to Mickey that you are him. No. And he's looking at you. Oh. It was going to be the oh. Hamlet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you and Falcon engage in an arm wrestling match. Mickey <laughs> comes forward. 
and puts his hand out. And by this time, this is you've our got distraction. quite a crowd of madcaps and redcaps. Some of them like crawling all over each other, like pulling down hats and like, yeah, yeah, kill her, kill her, kill her, Mickey, yeah, kill her, yeah. And they're just like throwing stuff at him. He's like, ah. Where is Waz? <sighs> so there is I a think- distraction. Where is Wazik currently? Is he still inside? Wazik is <laughs> yeah. still so, in this place here. I have. It's, I think we should. I think we should lure him into a tent. Well, one's empty. Jax, uh, but, Ethan, tell them we're torturing someone in this tent. Just Jax, quickly. we can wait in there. Just quickly. <laughs> to tell, who am I, what am I doing? I'm telling. I'm telling uh, Wazik. No, yeah. no. Before you do that, Jax is looking oh. if any of the red caps have left their position by the ballistas. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have. Yes, some of the ballista are not manned. Which one? Um, let's see. So where is where do you think this um this uh fight's going to be taking place? Maybe right here in the middle? Yeah. So we'll put go ahead and put Mickey there with um Falcron and Persephone. <gasps> oh, there's two of me. I'm alive. How are there two of you? Oh, I, I couldn't use my I couldn't move my one token, so I put myself onto the map, and then I realized I. I Which one can you move? Uh, the what the southern one. Take, that take one. yourself out of the gate. Yeah. No. There you go. Okay. So I've got. I'm going to be doing one. crowd control. If anyone gets a little bit too close, if anybody gets a little bit too rowdy, if anybody so... throws a D battery and hits Falcon, I'm on <laughs> that person. So I'm not going to move them all right now, but I'm going to say that the two main ballista right now are completely unmanned. Um, and the one over on the side here also, this uh, bottom bottom right-hand side is also unmanned. Now, this is a theory that I've got. Obviously, they've left. If I snuck up there, turned the ballista around and shot Wazik with it, would I get my sneak damage plus everything Are you proficient in ballistics? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've just been riding around on a like, you know, in a buggy. You know? <laughs> it's too cool not to have it happen, Jax. I mean, if you if you hit it with a ballista, yes, you're going to get sneak attack damage. It's yeah. the short bow of siege weapons. So, uh, I mean, if you attack from um, invisibility, if you uh, hit sneak attack, yeah. I got an idea. Hit me with invisibility. Quick quick quick, 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 quick. I will do it. <laughs> Jax goes invisible. I run up. Quietly turn I just hope around. the knife is in the right direction. I will st- stealthily turn the ballista around. <laughs> All right. Make a stealth check. To get advantage from being invisible? Yes, he does. Oh, okay. Well, 19... Although I know, although the the large thing moving would negate that, so we'll okay. say just the straight roll. So the nineteen, yeah. you are able to slowly move it. You do not attract the attention of any of the red caps that are nearby. You are able to move it. As you are moving it, you realize that there is a bar in place to keep it from rotating beyond the uh, the scope of Can I disable covering the outside. However, it's something you think you could probably dismantle oh, if you I needed disable to. Disable it then. All right, so a sleight of hand. Actual twenty. Hey! Oh, yes. Oh, there it is. Not only What's are you able... so happy about what's what happened. Natural Crit. twenty. Twenty-eight. Natural twenty for a twenty-eight. Yeah. Oh. So not only are you able to move this bar in such a way so that you can get the full range of motion on the ballista, but you're able to rig it in such a way so that as it moves back, it'll snap back into place as if nothing happened. <laughs> I will do that. I hope everyone appreciates they're about to see a sneak attack with a ballista. All like. right. So <laughs> everyone is focusing on um, on uh, Mickey and Falkrin. So uh, Falkrin, um, are you going to try to resist the strength of Mickey? For as long as you can. Come on, you got to put a show on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got to, I got, like, I don't want to look like a wimp. So, Fair you know, Falkrin's, she's, she's, She's dwarfish in her stubbornness. So yeah, that'll. So you reach out, you grab hands. Uh And as you do, Mickey stretches and two 
large bat-like wings unfold from like beneath its back flap f- flesh just <laughs> as they stretch out and <sighs> flies up into the air with you holding onto his arm oh. and is about to throw you down onto the ground what would you like to do should have stretched <laughs> <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> yeah. I, um, okay. So he's I, like. So, so you I, are you are grappled. This was a I'm, mutual a mutually in, entered grapple. So you are currently grappled. Okay. He is about to throw you down ten feet onto the onto the ground, and it will probably hurt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to. Oh, God, Sean, what are you gonna? Uh, can I? <laughs> can I make? Can I make uh, an athletics check to see, at, like, as he goes to try to throw me down, I want to put all of my weight, like, I want to grip his arm and then essentially try to, like, like throw him, like, pull him off of his uh, center with, since he's in the air. Since judo like, move, you want to yeah, do a so judo like, move and try judo, to interesting. Like, so judo throw him, so I land on him, or at least. Send him to the ground before me. So we will call this a shove attack. So make an athletics check, please. I'm going to do so uh, with my inspiration. Oh, Very good. It's turned into pro wrestling real like, fast. Oh, if, yeah. I don't know if someone's going to Actually, be based, based on the height discrepancy, I was thinking more of like, this is when children attack. I, I live this. <laughs> How dare you? That's good. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. T4. Oh. Nice. So. Great. Bokren, the clerical terror! <laughs> <laughs> so, with skill checks, a natural 20 does not necessarily mean a guaranteed success the way it does with attack checks. So that is a natural 20 plus your skill modifier, which is 4, so 24, mm-hmm. which beats the 23 that Mickey wrote. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. So, the closeness of the rolls, I'm sure, makes it even more epic. Incredibly. <laughs> Incredibly, <laughs> Mickey, this massive pulsating hunk of stitched together flesh goes to throw you down to the ground. You maintain hold of the arm, and as you reach the end of the momentum, there's a yanking as Mickey funds out of balance, and you are able to wrap your legs around and clip one of his wings and push him down, and the two of you fall. Taking three points of bludgeoning damage. However, you land on top with Mickey clearly defeated beneath you. Jax, roll your attack. Does anyone want to give me As inspiration? As Falkren um, stands over Mickey yes. and I, the Madcaps and the Redcaps are going crazy wanting you to finish him. I have, so... Finish him! Finish him! Finish I will, him! Finish him! I will, give Jax my inspiration for this and okay. knowing the plan I would like to have my imp go up next to him so once he lands the attack and becomes visible I can quickly cast invisibility again and deliver it through oh, oh, very good. <laughs> All right. so it will look like it was just a crazy accident roll it's, your attack he's, he's Jax. a blink goblin Jax, now I, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave it to you how good, based on Jax's experiences, do you think he is with firing a ballista? Um, well, he fires a short bow regularly, so... Quite different, though. Yeah. Um... He was able to pull off some really sick, like, steering and driving with a buggy that That's he... That's true. Just it's, also, it's also a really close range. It's not like he has to arc point and, and get click and for That's the drop true. of the... <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So I was just trying to think maybe, maybe it would be a straight roll because the disadvantage and advantage would would uh, would even out. But um, but that's a good point. I mean, it's literally just you know a couple oh, dozen feet away. So um, go ahead and roll that uh, with advantage there, Jack. Now, obviously, I haven't got a blister as a weapon. So what shall I use? My needle? Or... Just roll, make an attack roll um, and add your proficiency modifier. Uh, okay. I'll, uh... That'd be like a longbow attack, right? That'd yeah. be just the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm struggling or to press ball, buttons because of these bloody nails. <laughs> uh, 22 Ooh. to hit. Well, 22, that's a hit. There's a... And this 
barely fast enough to see as Jax, uh, barely slow enough to see as Jax reappears and the ballista that has Wasik, another red cap and a mad cap who are like leaning over the edge of it, watching the fight suddenly just explodes. Um, Jax, roll, uh, roll 8d8. Yeah, and then add, um, then add your sneak attack. Whoa, eight d eight. Oh my god! Okay, uh, oh. forty three. That's a really good one. Yep. Oh <laughs> goodness! Wow. Has All it right, killed so him? If it hasn't, I, I'll add um, Fury of the Small for another seven. Eight, that is seven. enough. The ballista how that you fired at. Sh- how much is it for the Watchers? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, 60 so damage. That is a total. 60 damage. So as the bolt streaks across the uh, open air, as everyone is cheering, there's a horrible crunching, exploding twing sound as another bolt on this uh, ballista that was already armed goes skyrocketing up into the air and then eventually comes back down. And there is nothing but a few scraps of material, blood, and bone where these three individuals were. And there is silence in the yard as everybody looks up. And they go back, uh, <laughs> uh, cheering for uh, Falkron uh, to finish Mickey. Mickey is looking up at you with his eyes wide. No, hey. You know, Eastland you- runs in and said, wasn't that fun, Mickey? Wasn't that fun? You said, you, you, you were the goodest boy. You did so good. And then I, and I go put my, and I, so I get off, I get off of standing on top of him and then like put my arm out to help him up. Eastland will help you help him up. All right, the two of you have him up. Was He's it, very was confused. Fun? Was it that fun? <laughs> um, was it that the two fun? mad caps that, the two red caps that were there, uh, would so whirl around as this thing is uh, shot. But of course, since your imp is there to cast invisibility, I will need a quick stealth check from Jax as you tr- quickly try to duck down into the. I think I I recast invisibility on him. I did, but in the split right. second between oh, right. that. And... Uh, all right. So what'd you roll? I think that's a sleight of hand check. You sure you want to do that? Is it the same out of Oh, oh yeah. I press the wrong button. Okay, twenty one. Twenty one. All right. So in the briefest of moments where you were visible after having fired this ballista, uh, there's a touch on your shoulder and you re disappear oh. and these two uh red caps come over to the uh ballista and examine it and sort of look at each other wide-eyed and look over at the destruction that has been wrought at the other right and they sort of start to creep away <laughs> wasn't us moving away from it <laughs> and it appears you have gotten away with the murder of wazik the red cap oh, yeah. well done I use the uh, invisibility to go and loot him. <laughs> to go loot him? <laughs> All right. Uh... He has a, a bag on him that contains uh, three pieces of gold and then an assortment of bizarre just bits and pieces of trash. There's a tooth There's a spring-like thing. There's a couple of gears. Um, You see a few things that look like pieces of charcoal that have been sculpted into strange um, faces. Um, I stick that bag inside the bag I hold in. Very well. It is around this time that Mad Maggie reemerges. She comes shuffling out. What's all this noise about? Old woman can't concentrate? Mickey, what are you doing? You fixed his leg. Mickey comes walking over to her. 
she squids at him as you know, when she looks down and is like, ah, looking my fine, Mickey. What happened? Mickey mumbles to her some strange gurgling sounds and she nods. Mm, interesting, interesting. Mm, trying to make friends, are we? That's wise. <laughs> but my preparations are complete. Where is your little golden friend? Where is our little golden friend? Lulu has been keeping close to Persephone, not flying around. A few times she got up and went exploring, but she came quickly back as she was pelted by dozens and dozens of rocks and other things um, from the redcaps and madcaps. And she sort of looks up, her eyes sad and scared, and looks around at the group. Um, I'm here. Is it time? Yes, I am prepared with the ritual. <laughs> yes, this would be good. The circle is on top of the hill. If you all accompany me there, we should get started. I'm going to take special care to uh, shadow Lulu as best I can. Uh, staying close to her whenever she's in range. All right. As you walk with her, she sort of flies a little bit and then comes back down and sort of flies up a little bit, moving at a slow pace. And you all follow Maggie as she leads you right down the middle gap in between these fingers. She comes to the steps and <sighs> begins to slowly, painstakingly climb the ladder. The rest of you follow her up one at a time until you are all standing around this circle on top of the hill. As she comes up, the red caps and mad caps sort of melt away and leave you with some privacy. In the middle of the circle are several black cushions. There you are, my friend. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> she says to Lulu. And Lulu sure about this? Do you want to remember, Lulu? Uh, yeah. Lulu, we, we, we won't do this if you don't want to. Mad Maggie, is the ritual starting now? Soon, soon. Lulu, this is your choice and it never has been anybody else's. I want to help, but I don't know if I want to remember. I think she's right. I think she will be painful. But I can do it if you help. Of course we'll help you, Lulu. I put a hand on Lulu. Pain that we go through leads us to what we are today. Whatever you have gone through, you are a good person, Lulu. Thank you. And you will stay one. And I cast Bless on Lulu. Oh, very well. Oh, it's been a long time since I felt that. Oh, thank you, Silas. I hug Lulu and say, Lulu, it's been a long time since I felt that. Okay, I think I'm ready. Just on, on the cushions? Yes, right on the cushions, dear. And she, Lulu goes and sort of does the little walk around a few times before 
nestling down onto these black cushions. Please, all of you, take yourselves a seat around the outsides of the circle. I couldn't stay in with her? Oh, no, we need you on the outside of the circle. We want to travel through her memories, not yours. All right. So each of you take your positions on the outskirts of this circle. It seems to have been painted onto the rock with some sort of dark red substance. <laughs> As you are gathering, Mad Maggie removes from somewhere around her stomach with a sort of a <laughs> popping sound, a skull that looks like it was being kept in some sort of cavity that she had created with the slunching and slouching of her folds of flesh. And then from the other side, another, and she holds him out. I don't think my sisters will begrudge me using them for a little assistance. And she places one skull at one point on the circle and another skull on the other point of the circle and they begin to sort of glow with a black smoke-like energy. Now, if you will all hold hands and close your eyes, I warn you, this will not be easy and it is not free of danger. You will see things, be called upon to do things, perhaps, and failure in this world will equate to damage to your mind. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. If anyone leaves the circle, the ritual will be interrupted, and we must begin again. Everyone ready? Yes. yes. She closes her eyes, and then her, this dark smoke that is emanating from these two skulls begins to emanate from her face, coming out of her eye sockets, her nostrils, her ears, and her mouth and it slowly begins to fill the inside of the circle and encompass all of you. And as it does, you can feel a telepathic bond forming between you and the people next to you. You are all under the effect of a detect thoughts spell. You will be able to read each other's minds if you wish. Surface thoughts are read easily. What you are currently thinking of in the moment if somebody wishes to go deeper, it will require rolling. Does anybody have anything they wish to do? If Do we have the intuitive understanding that if we were to go deeper, the person we were trying to find out more information about would feel that? You feel the touch and probing of five other minds and you can only infer that they're feeling you as well. Okay. Uh, just a clarification. Mm -hmm. How many people are linking hands? Is it just... There are five are... people linking hands. There is Lulu in the middle. Although you are not detecting her thoughts. And there is Mad Maggie who's outside of the circle with her hand reaching into it sort of controlling the smoke. And you are not detecting her thoughts either. You are detecting the thoughts of your group. So there's six of us holding her hands, you mean, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Persephone um, kind of feels that it's wrong, but can't help trying to at least scratch the surface to see if Islin's 
thoughts about Rim are what she says they are. I see. Islin, please make a wisdom saving throw. Mostly just trying to see if she's trying to save him. With a three. Ooh, you got a three. Uh, you are able to delve into Eastland's mind. Eastland, what are your true thoughts about saving Rim? Her, so, oh, so you're digging deeper. You're digging yes. deeper. You failed. It. You do not. You are not aware of it happening. Her, Although you could suspect that it, it, there's a possibility of it happening. Her prime concern is uh, she. You you know that she does not want to stay in this body. Um, she, the person that she cares for in this group is exclusively Typhon, but, um, she is happy to save Rim and return him to the body, provided that she can find a more suitable one of her own. You know that she does not actively wish the destruction of his soul. Okay. Anybody else? Jax will dig deeper into everybody to see if they're hoarding of any food. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully. Um, all right. Uh, everyone is hoarding food, Jax. Oh, we're not rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. You, yeah, you, I think everybody in the group at least has a little bit of food. So whether or not that's hoarding, I suppose, is up to you. Yeah. You are not aware that Silas has any food. Silas, you're aware that Jax tried to uh, infiltrate your mind. You have the opportunity to redirect that back at him if you wish. All right. I, I actually would... My surface thoughts become let's not mess this up being selfish. Does he know let's what get I was through this. For, <laughs> oh, well, though. All right, so it's so far the only one who's saved is Silas, and you all hear this uh, this uh, surface thought from Silas as it all goes out amongst all of you. Um, what is the what is the DC? A thirteen. It, what, what a okay, twelve won't do it then. Never mind. Um, so uh, yeah, if anybody is hoarding food, Jax now knows about it. <laughs> However. the darkness of this smoke fades and coalesces into a more of a concrete representation of a floor, a plane, and a place to stand. And then it brightens and from the grass grows first one, two, then a few dozen, and then all of a sudden, hundreds and hundreds of blades of grass, they just push up through the blackness and become a verdant field after seeing nothing but gray and black and brown and red and smelling nothing but the smell of brimstone and blood and burning tar. This scape fills you with deep contentment. And as you look around, you are walking through a glorious meadow. In the distance is a towering mountain that seems to be made of pure crystal. And there are flowers and there are birds. And in the middle of this field, walking with her hands out, touching the grass is a beautiful angelic figure, long, luminous hair wearing a blindfold simple clothing and feathered wings trailing behind her and around her gambling through the air is Lulu just chattering and the angel that she's flying around is smiling contentedly it's the rich radiant light of hundreds of dancing rainbows dissolves. Warm sunlight fills the area. As the pair strolls through the tall green grass, it suddenly 
interrupted by the harsh sound of Maggie's cackle. <laughs> this is farce. We must push through this. We must move past what she wants to see to what really is. <laughs> Pretty though it may be. Work. Push through it. We must find the deeper level. I would like you all to roll um, an intelligent saving throw, please. Um, would my magic resistance give me advantage? For it this? would. Okay. Got an 18. Okay. Oh, got a 14. Double 26s. Fantastic. Natural one. My intelligence modifier is it? Oh, oh okay. The vision begins to fade, and you see the figure of Lulu look around confusedly. Oh, no, no, where is it going? Oh no! And you feel as if you're moving through the film of a bubble, and there's a sort of a popping sensation and there's a twisting in your mind as you move through it but you're able to align your thoughts with those of you with all of you around holding hands moving as one unit through this memory and no one suffers any ill effects the green and beautiful verdant field fades and like drops of rain thick sludge begins to fall around you. It becomes a puddle of black bile, then a lake, and then from the lake rises a hill of ruddy clay and ash, and the lake spreads out and becomes the plains of Avernus. On the top of this plain, and on this hill, you see several figures standing. And in the distance, about 400 or 500 feet away, behind them, a vast army camped. This, this will be something worth seeing, I think. But these memories, they are jumbled. I think you will need to take a more active part in sorting them out. And that will be where we take our break. Back in ten minutes, everybody. As we were just leaving last before we our break, we uh, the party had engaged in a ritual to examine Lulu's memories to help her move past some blocks that she seems to have, remembering important facts about what has transpired in her life before now. And at first the party found a beautiful bucolic scene with her and an angel walking at peace and happy. But of course that is not reality, that is a fantasy. And they have pushed past it to another scene and apparently this one is a little confused. You are all gazing down upon a hill, and as you are watching, you see these figures engaging in a dialogue, but it makes no sense. The words they are speaking are common, and you are able to understand the individual words, but they're completely out of order. Just a gibberish, a mishmash of people speaking over one another, people reacting strangely based on what they're saying, people having strong reactions when nobody is speaking, people facing the wrong way. It's just a hodgepodge. And you hear the voice of Maggie. Come, come, show a bit more initiative, each of you. Find a suitable memory in which to inhabit. I will need you all to roll a d6, please. Uh oh. 
Typhon with a three. Jax with a two. Easton with a two. Easton, re-roll, please. Um, five. Is that five. It? Excellent. And um, Silas, could you re-roll that one again, please? He just can't help being number one. Got another one again. So Tess rolled a two. So I've got... No. So I've got Typhon with a three, Persephone with a one, Silas with a two. Jax, I'll need... Uh, Silas... All right, I think I've got it. Hold up what you've got. Yeah, no, I, I mean, as long as I've got four of you, the fifth one will be the last one, so I think we're good. All righty. Bear with me, my friends, while I DM, that is direct message, some information to our players. DM oh boy. is DMing us. Indeed. Oh, goodness, the level. He can slide into my DMs anytime. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. That went somewhere. It did. <laughs> I'm, I'm so a paladin. He looks like Zariel. I want to kill her, him, it. <laughs> All right, I, I see. Love hate find... relationship there. You get me. <laughs> Snuggle smite <laughs> relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Snuggle love smite, smite relationship. <laughs> I love that. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> All right. So it looks like that has gone through to Alias Prime for Silas. Okay, am I am I number one? You are. All right, and I'm reading out loud, or am I? It will become clear, but not at the moment. Wait until everybody has gotten theirs. Okay. Ooh. Well, you're yeah, you'll, that, you'll have to give anybody, me instruction. Goodness. Does anybody um, want to talk about the creation of their uh, costumes while Sean is sending this information? Out? Hot, cause I want to hear can't. about your gloves. Uh, oh, show, you have to show the gloves off. You got to. <laughs> I'm so sorry to interrupt. Persephone, could you tell me what your your um, DM him DM you what you're uh, doing? DM him. Here. Tess Elizabeth. Tess Elizabeth. Anyone watch the? Uh, I forgot what yeah, network is on the show Evil. That this, there's this one season. It's so out. good. Ryan and I are binging it. It's yeah. so. Doesn't good. doesn't Jade look like um? Whatever yeah, George. His name? George. What's it? George. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You're right. You're totally right. <laughs> it's George Green yep. and handsome. You as got well. a good point. Super oh, handsome. I yeah, oh, the so handsomest. Okay, now Lee, you've been complaining about them. I want to see them. Those fingernails. Let me see. Yes. Them. No, I'm taking them off. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so hard to type. I couldn't um, do anything. I couldn't sort my mask out or anything. I was yeah. just typing wrong, so I had to take them off. He's pedicured himself. I have got yellow eyes. <laughs> Okay, Islin sure Rim, I, I just just do this. So it's actually it's it's very it looks a lot cooler than it is. It was just very tedious folding squares of duct tape into triangle points. Um, the fingers you just kind of overlay them and they're secured with uh, little pieces of tape on the base. These are gardening gloves, so the texture for this is um, it's got uh, it's it's textured, so it creates it's the tacky type of glove. It's not the cloth. Yeah, yes, that's right. And so uh, the fingers, you just put them in a row, and then these are all uh, sort of overlaid and uh, down to the down to the base of the glove. It, it just uh, looks so good. It, it, yeah, it's really cool. It took a few hours, but it was it was a lot of fun. Good. Well, that and industry is amazing. How long did those braids take? Uh, I'll tell you because I did them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Not long at all. They're just the normal. But uh, he did try attempt to do them himself. Uh, it was very difficult. I ser <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> he of the long hair who have had to like braid your own. You have my sympathies and my respect. <laughs> like I can't do it. I, wow. It's I. Uh, I um I feel bad, but wig departments were always like, you're gonna have to learn to pin curl your own hair up under your wig hat. I'm like, yep, yep. I'm gonna have to learn how to do that. I never did. <laughs> I, was just always, I was just always come and be like, I can't. I don't know. And the, okay, <laughs> pin curl my hair for me. Put on my cap. Oh. 
All right, my friends. I believe everyone should have received a direct message from me by now. Has anybody nope. not? Nope. Nope. That's oh, well, that's uh, once again I've forgotten to press enter. Now has everybody received one? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. So you've all been given pieces of a scene. Some of you are narrators. Some of you are characters. There's a brief description for those of you who are characters to help you get into character. You will need to figure out, based on what other people are saying, what should be said and when. What Ooh. you say is in the order in which you say it. However, you will have no way of knowing when to say it until you hear what other people say. And Gosh, it's Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> this is old school Shakespeare. I love it. Indeed. Should we... Are we trying to emulate the characters that we've been given? Is that sort of the idea? That would be appreciated, yes. All right. I will give you one hint. The first one to speak should begin with On a Hill of Ruddy Clay. Now, just to be clear, there are many things in each of our programs. Mm -hmm. We speak apart and then pause. Speak, and if somebody thinks they have the next line to be said, they will say it. Do you um, have a buzzer for wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will inform you if things have gone wrong. However, I'm not going to buzz right when it happens because that would be too obvious. This is stressful. Good. Is everyone ready? <laughs> is everyone ready? That's why I play goblins. I don't play intelligent characters. <laughs> play a limus, I suppose. You, you're an intelligent goblin. What is, come on, man. Get with it. Just pretend there's food on the line. Ahem. On a hill of ruddy clay and ash, a group of friends stares anxiously at the sky. Streaks of lightning flash from behind clouds of soot. A battle is taking place just beyond their sight. There is a blast of energy and a booming clap of thunder rolls across the plains of Avernus followed by a roar of anguish from a bestial throat. Hmm. If she falls, I do not think the men will be able to hold. They. Well, well I don't think I need to explain to you that you've already gone off. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. I think so I didn't know where his narration necessarily ended. Ah, well, that would Can be a useful thing to say. So when you have come yeah. to the end of your particular form of narration, hold up a hand or say I have finished. So I will, I'll just raise my hand and as I come, I tried to stop. Yeah, I I, I was thinking maybe, but then it started again and I'm, I got... I'm a little bit I waited and waited, yeah. Obviously, because I've got something and then I've got one to four. So, so. Mm -hmm. Not all of you have the same amount. So we, we each have pieces of the puzzle and we have to figure out when to speak. And the only yeah. one that we know for sure is that I speak first. Correct. So let's let's try yours again, I think. Uh, Absolutely. Am I saying and the bit or the ones with the numbers? The ones with the numbers. Okay. The bit is there to give you uh, context for your character. And the numbers are all in order regardless of who it is. Hmm. Correct. But okay. it could be it could be that I say two things, Typhon says one. I say a third thing, Falkran says one. But you'll it goes to, in order for each of us. You'll have to listen to clues in the dialogue. Yep. yep. So, so to speak next. upon ceasing, I will simply clench, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all clenching. So. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Visual aids, people. Visual aids. I don't want, I don't have a green and a red light. <clears throat> Uh, on a hill, on a hill, on a hill of ruddy clay and ash, a group of friends stares anxiously at the sky. Streaks of lightning flash 
for behind clouds of soot, a battle is taking place just beyond their sight. The tallest among them smashes his great club down in frustration, sending a small cloud of dust into the parched air as he growls. Colon. Why in the nine hells would she fight him alone? It's not as if we hadn't already shared risks. Why spare us this one? Is she winning at least? Colin, we must be patient and have faith. Lulu, are you certain? She, she sent me away. She made me promise to stay safe. She said, I, I have to lead you to her, her, her body. If she, she, if she, oh, I should be with her. I'm so scared. <laughs> there is a black... Huh? There, there, snake nose. She wouldn't want us to weep. All right, we'll stop there. There have been some missed things. We will go back to the tallest among them smashes his great club down in frustration. Frustration. Uh, the, tallest, the tallest among them slash smashes his great club down in frustration, sending a small cloud of dust into the parched air as he growls. Why in the nine hells would she fight him alone? It's not as if we hadn't already shared risks. Why spare us this one? Is she winning at least? Enough, Olin. Enough, Jan. We must make haste. I saw a cohort of demons massing along the banks of the Styx. In her current state, Zariel will be unable to escape them. There is a blast of energy and a booming clap of thunder rolls across the plain of Avernus, followed by a roar of anguish from a bestial throat. Stop. We will Stop. go back. <laughs> we will go back to... The Why tallest. spare us this one? Is she Why? winning at least? Why spare us this one? Is she winning, at least? That might be my part, then. She has been the gravely wounded, as is her opponent. The outcome will be decided soon. Not even creatures such as Zay can long sustain this level of ferocity. Remember to read the first line on your page first. We will go back. Why spare us this one? Is she winning, at least? The elf is grasping her holy symbol, her eyes glowing with yellow light. Her gaze is upon a distant scene, and she speaks with a slightly dreamy tone. I'm guessing that's me there, then. She has been gravely wounded, as is her opponent. The outcome will soon be decided. Not even creatures such as they can long sustain this level of ferocity. She falls. I do not think the men will be able to hold. They will do as they have sworn to do. The oath of the Hellriders will not be broken due to weariness. We, pass we will them. stop and we will go back to slightly dreamy tone. Uh, Sean, I'm sorry, can I interrupt? Mm -hmm. I'm, sure. uh, do, you, do you stop us as, as the mistake happens? No. No, I do not. Why do you hate us? Okay. No, but you, <laughs> but, but you are resetting us to the I'm resetting you to a spot, to a point before when it was correct. Okay. Okay, so my part wasn't correct then. No, your part was correct. Slightly okay. dreamy tone was correct. Okay. Oh, that was me. Um, the elf is grasping her holy symbol, her eyes glowing with yellow light. Her gaze is upon a distant scene, and she speaks with a slightly dreamy tone. There is a blast of nope. energy. No, nope. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jax, you were correct. So my part, okay. So she has been gravely wounded, as has her opponent. The outcome will be decided soon. Not even creatures such as they can long sustain this level of ferocity. The Knight of Helm moves to the side of the bigger man, placing a calming hand on his shoulder and speaking gently. Olin, we must be patient and have faith. Lulu, are you certain? There is a blast of energy and a booming <laughs> clap of thunder rolls across the plains of Avernus, followed 
by a roar of anguish from a bestial throat. She sent me away. She made me promise to stay safe. She said I'm to lead you to her her body if she if she oh, I should be with her. I'm so scared. <laughs> there, there, Snake Nose. She wouldn't want us to weep. As the large man comforts the holophant, the vampire moves closer to the knight, speaking in a low whisper. Fails. I do not think the men will be able to hold. They will do as they have sworn to do. The oath of the Hellriders will not be broken due to weariness. We passed weariness a month ago, David. Are you blind? This is more. This place, it's eating away at them. Without Zariel, they... Coward! Hmm? You would have us abandon our general when our need is greatest? I'll break your pointed teeth right out of your damn skull! Stop! Oh. We will go back to, we oh. passed weariness months ago. Ah, oh, okay. Good run, though. I know, you were, you were committed. We passed weariness a month ago, David. Are you blind? This is more. This place, it's eating away at them. Without Zariel, they... Coward! Massive... No. <laughs> Which one? Which said. one? Okay. Well... They, both, they make sense. We both went both times. <laughs> Without Zariel, they... Coward! <laughs> They, nope. they... All right then. So <laughs> I forgot what I forgot what Alias's line was. So this place, it's eating away at them. Without Zariel, they coward. You would have us abandon our general. No. <laughs> it's not you. Your teeth are right out of your damn skull. No. I, no. I kept stopping. So I don't know. All right, no. that's not it. All right, oh, it's not. It's there. We go. Okay, just do the last sentence. Are you blind? No, all right. So, uh, it's, uh, okay. Uh, it's eating away at them. Without Zara. A massive explosion interrupts him. A long streak of fiery smoke lances across the sky. As the Lord of Avernus is cast down, he falls like a meteor. As from behind a distant cloud, a bright figure glowing with bluish light emerges. It moves erratically, its light flickering as the companions gasp as the form <gasps> dims, then plummets towards the ground. There is a moment of shocked silence broken by a whisper that grows in volume and intensity. It is done. Bell is defeated. But the cost. Vandria, give me strength for the cost. Devad, we must. Without Zeriel's will to sustain them, there is only one order that we can give that the Hell Riders will follow. Coward! <laughs> <laughs> you would have us abandon our general. Oh, no! Really? <laughs> yes, starting with Devad. Wow. Oh, damn it. <laughs> that's that's going to be my I nightmare tonight. I live Peter free. screaming coward. <laughs> I love it. Every DM, DM, you are not supposed to actually inhabit the character you are cosplaying tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's everything I hope for and more. Okay. Um, <laughs> David, yeah, we must. Yeah, yeah, um, David, we must. <clears throat> Without Zario's will to sustain them, there is only one order that we can give that the Hell Riders will follow. Gael, we need we'll need mounts. Nope. Shit. <laughs> Last sentence, Ryan. There is only one order that we can give that the Hell Riders will follow. Enraged, yeah. the big man launches himself at the vampire, muscles bulging, his blood red beard bristling. <laughs> As he shouts. Oh, <laughs> 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 
You want to abandon our general when you need its greatest? I'll rip your pointed teeth right out of your lamb's skull. Would you have every soul we lead here ground to the dust of Avernus? They can endure no more, Olan. Or are you too stupid to realize that? Enough, Olan. Enough, Jan. We must make haste. I saw a cohort of demons massing along the sticks. Like the sticks. In our current state, Zarya will be unable to escape them. Gael, we'll need mounts. The elf taps her long-bladed glaive four times on the ground, and four spectral horses appear, tossing their manes and whinnying with impatience. Her eyes are troubled as she speaks. These will not last long, and I do not have the power to summon them again. Olan, Yael and I will follow Lulu. Jander, muster the troops and prepare for our withdrawal. With Bell defeated, the force that threatened Elturel is no more. We are victorious. We will recover our general and leave this wretched place. One Do line not... has been skipped. Let's go back to oh. unable to escape them. That's you, Jax. Uh, 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 unable to escape them. That was my third line. That was a while ago, that one. Saw a core hood of demons massing along the banks of the Styx. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in our current state, Zeriel will be unable to escape them. The knight tears his gaze away from where the angel fell and regards the elf's serious expression. He looks behind them at the army of hell riders encamped on the field behind them before speaking with quiet authority. Olan, Yael and I will follow Lulu. Jander, muster the troops and prepare for our withdrawal. With Bell defeated, the force that threatened El Terrell is no more. We are victorious. We will leave our general. We will recover our general and leave this wretched place. Do not move out until we return. If you return. There have been a few skipped lines. Oh. So we will go back very close. Say, before speaking with quiet authority, please, alias. The knight tears his gaze away from where the angel fell and regards the elf's serious expression. He looks behind them at the army of hell riders encamped on the field behind them before speaking with quiet authority. He speaks with quiet authority. That's not me. It's not me. Or is the knight? You, I think. On yelled at me last time I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Tessie. The knight would be Haruman. The I knight. I did you stop me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Olan, Yael and I will follow Lulu. You are skipping a, mount, a, a line there. Oh, Come I on. said we will need mounts before the... Uh, no, he summoned the mounts. No, no, no. He pulled me right back. To oh, that back. was before. Yeah. Okay, that I misunderstood. I didn't realize how far back we were going. Before speaking know. with quiet authority of the mounts. Yael, we'll need mounts. Yes. So, okay. We've gone back a bit. Uh, the elf taps her long-bladed glaive four times on the ground and four spectral horses appear, tossing their manes and whinnying with impatience. Her eyes are troubled as she speaks. These won't last very long, and I do not have the power to summon them again. Amazing accent work. Ah. Uh, uh, hmm. These will not last long, and I do not have the power to summon them again. The three companions. Nope. This could be a lot of things. <laughs> it could. Very close to the end, guys. The next person to speak is the Knight Haruman. Olan, Yael and I will follow Lulu. Jander, muster the troops and prepare for our withdrawal. With Bell defeated, the force that threatened El Terrell is no more. We are victorious. We will recover our general and leave this wretched place. Do not move out until we return. If you return. 
Nope. Ah, okay. Ah. Okay. Samus. That's Rim. the end of my line. Yeah, but say it again. Do it again. Yeah. Oh, the whole thing. Uh, uh, Just we, the will, end. we will recover our general and leave this wretched place. Do not move out until we return. The three companions streak away from the hill, following the golden form of the holly font. Nope. Oh. It might be me. It is you. Do yeah. not move until we return. Coward! <laughs> Coward! No, all I do is interrupt people, so I could I could do any of my lines at any time. <laughs> all right, so back to... Sorry, the, to. do not yeah, move the... out until we return. Ha-ha! Back into the fray! Lead on, Snake Nose! Try to keep up, Yale! The Three Companions streak away from the hill, following the golden form of the holly font. The vampire continues watching for a few minutes, then mounting his spectral horse, begins riding towards the army of hell riders. His whisper of despair can barely be heard above the wind of Avernus. If, if, you. Oh, I said it. If, if you. Oh, you, you must have been muted. We didn't hear you. Oh, no, I don't. Oh. If you. If you return. All right. That is the end. Wow. <laughs> that was something think... else. All right. Oh, Sean's wanted to do that since he was like 12. Now, the question is, <laughs> did anybody actually the follow the story? <laughs> All right. I will read it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. no. On a hill of ruddy clay and ash, a group of friends stares anxiously at the sky. Streaks of lightning flash from behind clouds of soot. A battle is taking place just beyond their sight. The tallest among them smashes his great club down in frustration, sending a small cloud of dust into the parched air as he growls. Why in the nine hells would she fight him alone? It's not as if we haven't already shared the risks. Why spare us this one? Is she winning at least? The elf is grasping her holy symbol, her eyes glowing with yellow light. Her gaze is upon a distant scene, and she speaks with a slightly dreamy tone. She has been gravely wounded, as has her opponent. The outcome will be decided soon. Not even creatures such as they can long sustain this level of ferocity. There is a blast of energy and a booming clap of thunder rolls across the plains of Avernus, followed by a roar of anguish from bestial throat. The Knight of Helm moves to the side of the bigger man, placing a calming hand on his shoulder and speaking gently. Olan, we must be patient and have faith. Lulu, are you certain? She sent me away. She made me promise to stay safe. She said I am to lead you to her, her body. If, she, if she's not, I should be with her. I'm so scared. There, there. Snake knows she wouldn't want us to weep. As the large man comforts the Holyfont, the vampire moves to the knight's shoulder, speaking in a low whisper. If she fails, I do not think the man will be able to hold. They will do as they have sworn to do. The oath of the Hellriders will not be broken due to weariness. We passed weariness months ago, David. Are you blind? This is more. This place, it's eating away at them. Without Zariel, they... A massive explosion interrupts him. A long streak of fiery smoke lances across the sky as the Lord of Avernus is cast down. He falls like a meteor, as from behind a distant cloud, a bright figure glowing with bluish light emerges. It moves erratically, its light flickering and the companions gasp as the form dims, then plummets towards the ground. It is done. Bell is defeated. But the cost, Thandria, give me strength, the cost. There is a moment of shocked silence broken by a whisper that grows in volume and intensity. Damn it, we must, without Zarya's will to sustain them, there is only one order that we can give that the Hell Riders will follow. Enraged, the big man launches himself at the vampire, muscles bulging, his blood-red beard bristling as he shouts, Coward! You would have us abandon our general when her need is greatest! I'll break your pointed teeth right out of your damn skull! Would you 
have every soul that we led here ground into the dust of a furnace. They can endure no more, Olan. Oh, are you too stupid to realize that? Enough, Olan, enough, Jan. We must make haste. David, I saw a cohort of demons massing along the banks of the Styx. In her current state, Zariel will be unable to escape them. The knight tears his gaze away from where the angel fell and regards the elf's serious expression. He looks behind them at the army of Hellriders encamped on the field before speaking with quiet authority. Yal, we'll need mounts. The elf taps her long-bladed glaive four times on the ground and four spectral horses appear, tossing their manes and whinnying with impatience. Her eyes are troubled as she speaks. These will not last long, and you do not have the power to summon them then again. Olan, Yale and I will follow Lulu. Jander, muster the troops and prepare for our withdrawal. With Bell defeated, the force that threatened Elturel is no more. We are victorious. We will recover our general and leave this wretched place. Do not move until we return. Ha <laughs> ha! Back into the fray! Lead on, Snake Nose! Try to keep up, Yale! The three companions streak away from the hill, following the golden form of the Hollyfont. The vampire continues watching for a few moments, then, mounting his spectral horse, begins riding towards the army of Hellriders. His whisper of despair can barely be heard above the winds of Avernus. If you return. And with that, Words. the scene oh, begins cowards. to fade. <laughs> cowards! <laughs> cowards! Yes, very good. Very good. The darkness returns, leaving in it just the barest spark of a golden image floating through darkness. Unending darkness. What? What is this? We should move on to the next... Yeah, what... What is happening? As you are moving through this dreamscape, you feel a surface below you and you are able to find ground with your feet. You continue to walk towards this distant mode of golden light which you assume is Lulu but as you do there is a gripping <laughs> sensation that clutches your feet with each step more and more of some invisible substance is <laughs> grabbing onto your boots your shins trying to pull you down and it's sucking you under. I will need everybody to make a athletics or acrobatics. I know what I'm doing. Your choice. Mm. All right. So Eastlin rolled an eight, but she's going to use a point of luck to re-roll. All oh, right. I'll mutter guide me. What you mean, the thing that I keep forgetting to do with Elimus? Oh, yeah, hey! That, thing. All right. that could have saved him loads last week. Say. Falkron, you have passed. Oh, thank you are able God. to pull your leg out of this substance and you begin to float above this invisible floor that is sucking you down. Eastland, you have passed with your lucky roll and like Falkron, you are able to float. You can see Falkron, but it's more of a feeling of where he is in space because you are able, where she is in space because you're able to feel her mind. Persephone, Silas, Typhon, you have failed. Obviously, Jax, you have succeeded with a 30 on your acrobatics roll. <laughs> you also <laughs> pop out of the invisible sludge and are floating above times. it. Those of you who failed, please DM. take. Could DM. I not cast fly mm -hmm. on myself instead of trying to. Am I able to uh, give Sorry. guidance to one of the people next to me? Uh, let's wait for just a second. No worries. Um, you, uh, 
you are able to cast fly upon yourself. You have the capacity to cast any spells or do anything that you oh, would be able okay. to do. However, you are still being sucked down unless it's misty step or something that actually takes you out of a grappling or a, a caught situation. I see. You'll still be you'll still be there. So those of you who failed, please take five points of psychic damage. And you may try again. Well, that's not fair. Jax is immune to psychic damage. He is. <laughs> <laughs> so I will need another roll from Persephone, from Silas, and from Typhon. Acrobatics or athletics, your choice. All right. All right. Those of you who are free, I have rolled an help. eighteen. Yeah, eighteen is a success. You are able to pull yourself out of the sludge before. It consumes you. I, will I could use a little help. Eastland is going to help Typhon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll help whoever's next to me. That's not going to do it. Can I pull him out <laughs> myself? Uh, no, your action was to help. Okay. Um, in fact, that it, and pulling him out is the action of helping. So I've got it I from Sias. I've got it from Typhon. I do not have it from Persephone. She's not here, she, but I will help she Persephone. Has, yeah, do All you right. want me to... I'll, just roll sure. the... Would you roll Everyone her? helps Persephone. All right. So it's with advantage, yes? Yes. All right. Lovely. Roll the double. And... Well, oh. Okay. Well, one of the, so one of those was a 19. The other 19 one was a will three. definitely help. So, yeah. so with well, Jax's help, Persephone is able to emerge from She's the sludge. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Typhon, you take another five points of psychic damage. As you are slowly being consumed by this invisible sludge, this manifestation of Lulu's unwillingness to confront her past. I'm guessing I have to repeat it? You do. DM, I wish to give him guidance. All right. There we go. Uh, we well, that's 25. Arcana, but oh, um, yeah. it would be a 21. 21 is high enough. With the help of Ilmater's guidance and those of you, such as Eastlin, who are pulling on him with a mighty effort, you are able to pull him out of this invisible sludge and there's a... <laughs> almost a groaning exhalation of air as he is removed. Yes. My heroine. Good, good. Very close now. We must push through her defenses. She must look. No, and I mean, I left my heroin in there. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the... <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> my heroin! <laughs> <laughs> this is the theory. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Heroin! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> trying to create a mood, but that is funny. That's legitimately funny. I, I, I'm tickled by that. All right. The um, the darkness begins to take on more of a cloudy look again. Um, the You lose sight of the little moat of golden light in the distance. And once again, you are hovering over a familiar red hill. It's clay packed hard by thousands of feet humanoid and otherwise. Haraman, the Knight of Helm, climbs to the top, his eyes desperately scanning the horizon. Where are they? Why? I told them to wait. His voice is dull with shock and confusion. Blood covers half of his face, his armor bent and smoking in places. Cresting, the hill behind him comes Olanthius and Yal, supporting the barely conscious form of Zariel, angelic but wounded between them. All of them appear exhausted, bloody, desperate. Zariel, her wings in tatters, cradles her left arm, which ends in a ruined stump the three of them collapse at the top of the hill. No one is answering my messages, says Yale. Perhaps 
There's something blocking. No, says Olanthius, rising, his fists clenching his club. That snake gender. He's led them away. Back to the gate. They've abandoned us. Help me stand, Yael, says an unfamiliar voice, at once both childlike and wise. Zariel, archangel of Celestia, struggles to her feet and draws her sword, magnificent, resplendent with light, she raises it to the air and a burst of power blasts into the sky with a sound like a thousand trumpets. Hell riders, to me! The echoing sound fades and there is silence except for the incessant wind of Avernus. Look, shouts Haruman pointing. Over the bleak plain streaks Lulu, her golden wings beating the air furiously. She lands on the hill, panting. They, they wouldn't listen, she says, holding back tears. They throw things at me. They're moving through the gate. They, they aren't. No one is coming. Darkness gathers on Zariel's faith. So... With a trembling hand, she reaches up and removes her blindfold, revealing golden eyes that blaze with fury. Lulu shrinks away, but the rest of the companions step towards the angel, basking in the warmth of her anger. A keening whine rises over the sound of the wind as a horde of demons comes into view across the plains. Yes, yes, comes the voice of Maggie. Here it comes. This pain, delicious, delicious. These people will fall, but you must remain standing until the end. We must see. My friends, as demons fill the horizon, making their way towards this hill, we will roll initiative. Oh. <laughs> Please place yourselves on the board where you think you will be. I feel particularly bonded with this barbaric looking gentleman here. For some reason. For some I reason. had mentioned I would be next to Lulu. Indeed. Uh, do we have a ETA on Persephone there, Ryan? Um. A most excellent question. One I shall answer for you very shortly. Uh, am I? Here she comes. Oh, here she comes. Oh. <clears throat> uh, like here I said, very she shortly. Comes. Roll okay. initiative. I, so I heard everything that was happening. So. Okay, good. Oh, awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Initiative. Bitches. Oh, I have to click my character. That would help. Where am I? Uh, you might have to put yourself back on. We've jumped into a new screen. Thank you. I wanted so bad. I don't know if you um, guys remember Muppet Treasure Island. Of course. Oh. Billy Connolly is saying, um, what if, I don't remember what the full line is, but when he calls Gon, Oh, nose! <laughs> when he yes. grabs it <laughs> or something. Quiet there, hose nose. Jimmy, <laughs> jim, jimmy, jim, jim, jimmy, jim, jim, jim. Yeah. All right. I believe we have everybody. Silas, Jax, Persephone, Eastland, Falcron. Did we get a Typhon? Oh, uh, yes. Typhon. Typhon is there. I'm not seeing Typhon on my initiative counter. Oh, on your initiative counter. I see what you're getting at. Yeah, that's All... because he rolled before there was a token. Oh, I will fix it. There it is. First one was 13. Gotcha. Very well. Uh, 13.16. Okay. Oh, all right. Are we good with that? Yeah, you just need to move me down. Oh, I see. To 13. Silas, with a roll of 21, you are first. Um, is this difficult terrain? It's just a hill? It is just a hill. Going down is not difficult. Going up is. 
Okay. Then I will stay where I am at. I will hold an action to strike with my glaive any enemy that comes within my range, which is 10 feet. Very good. The next round we have... Quasit comes at you there and there and there. You may take your attack on the one that approached you first. Let's see here. Nine to hit. Nine is not a hit. Anything else from you, Silas? Uh, that was a held action. That's all yes. I can do. Right. So let's see, with a speed of 40 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, can get to here. As it scrambles up the hill, it uses all of its movement and action to get to Typhon. Similarly to the one that attacks the uh, Shade of Olanthius. Jax, you and Yael are fending off these three, all of them scrambling up the hill as they go can only move at half their speed so all they can do is get to you um persephone i'm going to move you into an actual square if you don't mind um that is all of the closets <coughs> so none of them were able actually 5 10 15 20 yep none of them were able to actually take an attack on this turn um, that will bring us to the Balgura, the Balgura, large, ape-like, huge muscled backs, bluish faces that are snarling, eyes too small in the middle of their heads, but burning with a bright intensity, saliva mixed with bile streaming from their mouths as they run at you with ferocity that makes your blood run cold. One, two, three, four comes to here and attacks Haruman. One, two, three. This one cannot move and attack. It moves to there. Oh, here's some more quasits. They move to there and there. This one again cannot move and attack. He just moves. This one comes up and stops there in front of Silas. That is the end of their turn. Typhon. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a little crazy right down in here. Um, I am... <clears throat> well, if I had a signature spell, it would be this one right through the Barulgura and through these... Hopefully through these two quasit squares, mm -hmm. I'm going to toss a bolt of lightning. Zap. Zap. Synchronisticos. So that is a dex save, correct? It is. So I have from one of the quasits an eight. It's a failure. Uh, I beg your pardon. They have advantage. So not an Do eight, they? a 22. So a success. The other one gets a 17. However, a feeling that it's not going to matter much. How about the Barol Gura? I am looking at it here. I didn't, didn't want to cut in, but when they moved in, could I have used my reaction to move away from them? Uh, yes, of course. So I would have moved to there. Okay. Uh, dexterity save from the Balgura. He has rolled a four. That is very badly rolled. Not good for him. All he right. will take the full 37 points. Goodness. The rest will take half. So 17. 17. Well, uh, both of these closets yeah, are destroyed. 18. Sorry. Yeah. No. In a, but not that it matters. <laughs> in a uh, cascade of sparking power. I will display them as such. That is the end of your turn, Silas? Yeah. Typhon. Typhon. Sorry. So sorry. Um, Coward! <laughs> Coward! Coward! <laughs> I was just thinking I ought to um, delineate which of these creatures are which. 
So the Balgura have all gotten handy dandy little thingies. So that will bring us to Jax. Handy um, dandy little thingies. So oh. the one that you just hit with lightning, that was the orange, yeah? No, red. that was red. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shut up. Okay. I will attack orange. Uh, 12 to hit. Uh, 12, I believe, is yes. 12 does not pierce its armor, which is extremely thick hide. Does a 13 hit? No, okay. Anything else from you, Jax? Um, I will do, 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 just disengage to the. Jax IRL s- looks like he has a red dot and a blue dot on his character. Yes. <laughs> I will say, Typhon, as the lightning struck the Balgura, it did not appear to do nearly as much damage as you were hoping. And you see the lightning coursing over its hair, and it dusts some of it off Mm. without seeming to have been that much pain. That was exactly half as effective as I imagined. Damn it. (laughs) Exactly. Anything else from you, Jax? Uh, no, I would. I just moved this gauge to, to that. All right, that will bring us to Persephone. All right, I'm going to cast Shatter. Uh, Show me where. Just right there. Right there, excellent. So that is Dex saves, correct? That is con saves. Con saves. All right. Balgura has rolled a 21. Man. The two. So you got two Balguras. Yes. Balgure. The other Balgura has rolled a 20. Man. The Quasit has rolled a 14. Which I believe is a fail. Fail. Yeah. So How that takes damage? the 14, 16 for the fail and oh what? Uh eight for the uh passes. It goes down. The other one, I believe we can safely say is going to die no matter what he rolls. Because if he passes, he's not going to be able to withstand that amount of damage. And if he fails, well, it would be even worse. So anything else from you, Persephone? Um No. I will say that psychic damage did precisely as much damage as you expected it to do. Eastlin. Um, Sean, will you allow her to have had uh, a weapon conjured from the beginning of the battle? Yes. Okay. She will will take a shot at the uh, Balgura that's red next to Typhon. Very good. Uh, But before she does that, with a bonus action, she is going to cast Hex. Um, on that Balgura to add a 1d6 if she connects. Very good. All right. Is the short bow. She rolled the short bow. 18 is a hit. Uh, because it is engaged, that's nine points of uh, uh, piercing damage. Plus, uh, if we're going to take the bonus out, she's from the hex earlier. A total of 12. Total of 12. Thank you. So be it. Anything else, Eastland? Uh, no, she's going to stay where she is. All right, it'll bring us to Falkron. Falkron will, like, she's going to look at what's to come, and she'll draw a quietus and swing on the, uh, the quasit. Is that the mm-hmm. right word? Go yes. Ahead. Swing on the quasit in front of her. So. Roll. That is a hit. Oh, sorry. The 18 to hit. Lovely. It definitely sorry. hit. Good, very good. Uh, Quasits are not undead, yes? Correct. Correct. Uh, That is going to be 10 uh, slashing magic damage. The Quasit falls cloven in two by Mm. Quietus. Anything else from you? Yes, Uh, Falkrin goes ahead and summons up the energy and brings everyone's favorite spiritual weapon, Steve, to the battle. Uh, And she'll send it uh, so, uh, 17, she's going to send it to try to hit, uh, this, um, orange, uh, the, the blue monkey demon. 
So. All right. <laughs> roll <laughs> damage. For, roll the attack and hopefully damage for Steve. Uh, okay, so Steve rolled a 17 to hit. 17's a hit. And 10 force damage. 10 force damage. Yes. And Very good. Up. And then uh, she'll take her movement to just move in close to there. Uh, and that'll be me. As this round ends, there's a... No! Haruman! And you see one of the Balguras reach down and pick up Haruman, who is wailing against it with his long sword. I mean, sorry, his great sword. He freezes it way in the air to try and stab it down into the creature. But as he's at the apex, the Balgura squeezes and blood gushes from Haruman's mouth. And then the Balgura just rips him apart and drops the two pieces. And Lulu, no! She flies over to him and catches the top part of his body as it falls and looks into his eyes as they go dim. Silas, your turn. Okay, um, just because I had to step away, I apologize. Um, did anyone, were there any attack of opportunities or anything of that nature? Everyone's just converging on this point? Correct. It was uh, all one-sided, all damage done by the group. None of the enemies have done any damage yet, except for that one that just slew Haruman. Okay. And the figures that are around us that I don't recognize... Mm -hmm. um, one of them was Haruman, and he's dead. Correct. Lulu, I recognize. Um, the one in the middle here is Zariel. This one over here next to Typhon is Olanthius. And the elven woman here is Yael. Okay. I am going to forego a bonus action, but I'm going to invoke i'm going to glance sideways for only the second time in my life have i seen someone else who is a follower of vandria i'm going to look at them and then i'm going to invoke vandria to turn the unholy and everything except for the imps off to the side are within my range mm -hmm. every single thing so uh, this is where we get to watch Sean roll some caves. Indeed. So, uh, what sort of save am I rolling? Um, again, I'm not used to being Each a paladin. You must make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> All right. So, I have one fail. So, this one has failed. I will make a mark there to remind me. And I will say again, as you cast out this divine power and you feel it coursing through you, as it expends beyond you, there is as, as if there is a force without that is trying to push it back in and contain it back within you. Um, it is released into the air. However, it is not as effective as you were hoping it would be. Uh, let's see here. So I have a 19 on the Balgura here. That would be blue Balgura. Green Balgura has a 12. It's a, it's a 14. Uh, okay. Yeah. So All right. that, that's the have... hurdle to clear. All right. So, so we are just surrounded by people. We've already lost uh, one of four. I think... Zariel survives. That's just a guess. Lulu survives. Another guess. I don't know if we survive. <laughs> Claws crossed. All right, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm saying this for my own benefit, so I have to remember as this goes through here. These two have saved. Um, let me continue. Okay. The orange Balgura has saved. The red Balgura has saved. 
However, the quasit that is facing Typhon has failed. Uh, has uh, has has saved. Excuse me. Has saved. Right. So, I believe that is all of them. Uh, blue and green Bulgara did not save. Uh, I believe all the Balguras have saved. I think green failed. He rolled a 12. Did green fail? Let me just double check my rolls here. Doot, 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 doot. Well remembered, Jax. You are correct. Green failed. And uh, approximate. So anything that doesn't have a lightning did not fail? Correct. Okay. The lightning bolts succeeded. And green, I'm sorry, orange and red both saved. They did. So they get lightnings. Yes. So it looks like I took one, two, three of the smaller and one of the larger. Yes. So on their turn, they need to run, correct? Uh, uh, Spend its turn running as far away as it can, and it can't move near me at all. No reactions, and it can only use dash. Very good. That will bring us to... Uh, unless there's anything else from you, Silas. I'm actually... Uh, I said I would forgo my bonus action, so I'm done. I'm not going to oh. move. All right. So that will bring us to the quasits. Let's see here. This quasit runs. I'm going to just put him to the edge. Runs to there. The Balgura runs to there. He leaps over this little thing of fire. This one runs to here. And I believe that is all the ones that are running. So, the closet that is facing you, Silas, attacks with its claw. Hitting AC 21. That's a hit. Take uh, 12 points of psychic damage. Jinkies. The one facing Typhon attacks. It's claw. The what? Uh, oh, the that's quasi- the one saved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, quasi- yeah. It attacks with a uh, hitting AC 18. Um, I will shield. Shield. All right. These claws rake across the arcane energy of your magic shield. The Balgura that has the blue dot attacks Falkran. It reaches out with its fist, hitting AC 18. I believe that is a miss. Uh, no, an 18 is a hit. That's all. It is a hit. Yeah, it's ah. meat to meat. So. 13 points of psychic damage, and its fist hits AC 8. I believe that is a miss. Yeah, it is a miss. The one that is closest to Zario. Oh, there is another. I did not roll a saving throw for this closet. Let me just double check that. That is a fail. So it runs as well. Okay. He attacks. Let me just double check here. All right. It attacks Yael. Hmm. Okay. And the one that is up next to Silas attacks Silas. The bite comes down with AC 20, nine points of psychic damage. And with its fist hitting AC 15, which is a miss. That will be the end of the Balgura's turn, which will bring us to... Oh, we still have some quasits to go, don't we? Yep, alrighty. Quasits. Alright, both of those attack Yal. Okay, now we are done with them, and that will bring us to Typhon. Okay. <clears throat> How is... Uh, Mr. Red here looking for damage. Um, he's looking pretty hurt. Okay. Then that ca- it, do I have my imp in all of this? Is my familiar with me? Your imp was not a part of the circle. Okay. 
Um, in that case, I will just don't really want to provoke. I'll just stay here, and that's resistance. So I will cast Thorn Whip at the red one to try and just deal some more damage. Very good. Um, 16 hit. 16 does hit. Beautiful. For 10 points of magical piercing damage. Very good. That will bring us to Jax. Um, Jax will... See, so the red's the most damaged, yeah? It is, so by far. Jax will sneak in here and try to hit red. Okay. Uh, 28 to hit. 28 to hit. For uh, 20 points of non, uh, for magical damage, sorry. It is barely standing as you come up and you slice one of the tendons on its leg and it crumbles to one knee, um, letting out a howl of anguish pain. Furio the small for another seven. That finishes it. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else from you, Jax? Uh, 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 I will move back into there. All right. Persephone. All right. I'm going to attack blue with my rapier. And out of curiosity, I say, can you hear me still? And it apparently does not respond. Oh, good. Interesting. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 is a hit. 11 piercing. Very good. Uh, hit him again. Same thing. Oh, nine to hit. Nine is not a hit. And my dagger. With an 11 to hit. Uh, 11 is not a hit. All right. Then I'm done. All right. That will bring us to Eastland. Eastland will uh, change the target of her hex to this uh, closet uh, to right. the left of Typhon, and she will take a shot at it. Very good. Slightly increased AC, I assume, being in, in front of Typhon. 22 is still a hit. It's going to be uh, 12. It falls pierced by your arrow. Excellent. Uh, I, um, Eastland will look at Lulu next to her and say, Confront it. Do not be afraid. We are here with you. Her eyes are wide. She does not appear to hear you. Okay. End of my mm -hmm. turn. And that will bring us to Falkrin. Falkrin. Uh, so, uh, DM, can I move into the space where Haruman was? Of course. All right. I just wanted I will, to double check. Uh, I will move him away from the battlefield. <laughs> and put him in the two squares he now occupies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Falcon uh, like moves into the space, having seen that poor knight get ripped in half, and she's just like, "Too many demons, too many demons." And then she casts Spirit Guardians. Oh yeah! Ooh. So yeah. Good spell. that's a great spell to cast. All right. So I believe I hit everything except well okay uh, everything's in my range it's a 10 foot square correct the 15 foot 15 foot oh, that's something <laughs> isn't that something 15 foot looks radius. like just the one closet yeah 15 foot radius so that is everything except i believe the two closets uh, i'm not sure which one uh oh look at that pretty circle yeah <laughs> right, got it. Uh, we will take care of them when it reaches their turn. Anything else from you, Falcon? Uh, yeah, and then uh, using my bonus action, I'm just gonna have Steve the Hammer like come down onto the uh, the Bagura. Well, that's the theory, anyway. Let's see if uh, Steve's up to snuff. So, uh, spirit weapon rolling to hit. He rolls. A 21. To 21 hit. is a hit. Well done, Steve. If right. Only Steve cared. Oh, oh, mean. Wow. I dare you. Steve does. Sorry, eight. One second, guys. My sound's gone. Bloody pain no worries. It's all right. We're all hearing. I'm hearing music. I'm hearing people. Yeah. No problems on this end. Um, I.
brings yeah. us to, okay. to the end of this back. round. At the end of this round, you see Olanthius wheeling this massive club back and forth. And he smashes down one of the remaining quasits next to Yale. He runs in front of her and destroys this quasit. He looks on the horizon and he sees a carpet of these creatures coming at him and he looks around no no not like this and he pulls out a dagger from his belt Lulu no Olympias, don't do it and he jams it into his throat and cuts a huge gout out of it blood begins to stream onto his red beard staining it even darker red as he comes to his knees he reaches out a hand and touches Lulu's face as huge silver tears are pouring out of her eyes and he tries to say something but he cannot blood dribbles out of his mouth and he falls forward dead which will bring us to the top of the round with Silas the first thing I do is look at Lulu and say Lulu, remember, this pain is part of you. Do not deny it. Then I will take an attack on the closet above me with Aranian, my elven glaive that is moon touched. And I'm going to. Make the roll. And I'm going to use one of my special abilities. No, I'll stop Very that. Good. The nine. Stop there. With yeah. a nine. I'm afraid a nine. a nine does not hit. And then I'm going to action surge. Okay. Um, for another strike. For an eight. I'm afraid an eight also does not hit. Anything well, else from you, Silas? I'm so glad that I was able to cut them by a quarter before missing everything in sight. Uh. I'm just going to take a uh, simple sidestep, putting myself directly in front of the closet. Uh, well, there went Lulu. Oh no! Yeah, sorry. Protecting... Lulu went. Lulu went down to be with okay. Alanthius as he died. <laughs> um, uh, that being the case, then I'm going to take one step closer with my back to Islin and finish my turn. Very good. So that closet follows you. This closet oh. comes in to attack Eastland. However, as the closet moves into the space with the spiritual weapons, it takes quite a bit of damage, I believe. Is that a um, wisdom saving throw? Wisdom save for half? Yeah. Uh, no. It... Yeah. So, yeah. Wisdom save uh, half if you fail. What is the oh, half? Oh, oh. Uh, it was 15. So, half of that? Is seven would, would, would still kill it. So oh, as it comes into your the range of your spiritual guardians, which take what form, may I ask? Oh, uh, they are uh, there are several tiny Steve the hammers. <laughs> it's just because he swirling cares. hammers <laughs> all all his progeny are all swirling around, and they just <laughs> rip it to shreds. Um, let's see. The, ball. the hammer in me sees the hammer in right. you. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Not must stay dead. This is my <laughs> hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yes, favorite. that's my favorite wow. thing so far. Oh. So I have a success on this Bulgura. Okay. A total of seven damage, correct? Yeah, I'm sorry. Seven that's what three. we call an alley oops in the pun world. Indeed. <laughs> uh, all of the quasits that are here die without needing to make a saving throw because they cannot withstand your power. However, this other Bulgura attacks. Uh, let's see. He rolls a critical failure. So, that is a 14 points of damage? 15 points 15 of radiant points damage. points of damage. Thank you. All right. Now, all the quasits are dead, so the Bulguras go. Bulgura closest to Persephone, Mr. Blue here, attacks with a bite hitting AC 19. 
uh, please allow me. If he is still <laughs> here. Apparently it still works. Okay. You sort of send out a, you see this huge fist coming down at you and you are able to move it in such a way. And as, as you twist your hand, you get a few extra twists thrown in there by some entity, which seems to confuse the fist coming at you and it goes wide. However, it also leans down to bite you, hitting AC 17. Hits. It's 14 points of psychic damage. <laughs> the one that is closest to Typhon steps forward and attacks him. With a bite, hitting AC 18. Oh, uh, shielded. Shielded. Fist hitting AC 24. It's six points of psychic damage. Hmm. That will be them done. That will bring us to Typhon. Rude. All right. <laughs> it's right next to me, but I. So I will thorn whip him. Obviously not pulling him closer to me, but 17 to <laughs> 17's hit. 17's a hit. That's going to be a lovely eight points of piercing damage. All righty. Anything else from you, Typhon? Nope. Hoping those spiritual guardians hurt him a lot. So. All right. Jax, your turn. Uh, Jax will move to there and attack. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where are your attack? 29 to hit. That's a hit. 21 magical damage. 21 damage. Anything else from you, Jax? Uh, no, that's it, thanks. I'm going to stay there. That'll bring us to Persephone. Alright. Um, attack in blue again. With the 19 to hit. It is a hit. 11 magical piercing again. Nice. 24 to hit. 24 is a hit. And magical piercing and and then uh, big fat nothing. And big fat nothing. Very good, however. You are dodging in and out of these huge fists that are coming at you. You feel the wind passing by you as each of them come and as each one goes by, you find an opening and just come in with your uh, as yet unnamed mm -hmm. rapier. And uh, you see <laughs> this black blood falling from this creature. Incidentally, as the blood from all of these creatures is spraying around in the uh, spiritual guardians and the blows you're going you find that it is not actually landing on you. However, a lot of it is landing on Zario. No. That will bring us to Islin. Uh, Islin will change the target of her hex to the... Uh to or orange uh, next to Typhon and she will take another shot with her Hellfire Shortbow. 25. 25 to hit. 4. 14 plus 1. 15 uh, magical damage. Excellent. He is not looking well. Uh, just for my own uh, sake, if I fall in a creature, do I still get temporary hit points in this realm or no? Uh, you do. Okay. That will bring us to Falkron. All right. Uh, I saw... I almost said Rim, and then I got sad. Oh, um, so so uh, I saw Yislin attacking the orange uh, bug. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm going to... Okay, so uh, DM, when I do Spiritual Guardians, do I maintain the first damage roll that I did as the damage that's done? No, the... we re-roll each time. Okay, well, we roll again. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take, uh, yeah, I'm starting to get pissed at this thing, so I'm just gonna take, um, Quietus and just start hacking at blue. So, uh, swing Quietus. And that's a 19. A hit. Lovely. And so with that 19, Quietus does... What does Quietus do? 13 Ooh. magic slashing damage. Nice hit. Well, struck Quietus. Uh, he is also barely standing. Good, because here comes Steve. Uh, so, 
Steve's gonna swing. Come on, hammer time. Oh. Oh, Steve. Oh no, Sorry. Steve. That's all right. It's all right. Steve doesn't care. Swing and a miss. Steve feels great. <laughs> Anything else from you, Falkron? Just disdain. With the end of this round, as you have been fighting, the creatures that you have destroyed have been replaced by others. They just keep coming. The angel in your midst, whirling about one-handed with the sword, sending heads and limbs flying, with each one a cascade of black blood falls on her, and you see her weakening. She comes down to her knee, and Yale rushes to her side as Lulu lets out a wail. And in the midst of the chaos, there is a moment of clarity as the monsters that you are fighting seem to move slowly. And Zariel holds out her blade. Yael, I no longer have the strength to wield this. Take it. Hide it. I would not have it be a trophy for a lord of hell. Yale says, no, I cannot, mistress. We need you. I am done. But I will face my end with the honor and glory of Celestia in my heart. She passes the hilt to Yell, and as Yell touches it, a portion of light seems to leave Zariel's form, passes into the blade, which glows even brighter than before. And Yell lets out a scream as two huge feathered wings erupt from her back, and her light golden eyes begin to glow with a luminosity that wasn't there before. And she looks down at the form of Zariel, looking at the blade. What have you done? Go. Hide it. They cannot find it. You know why. Yell looks down in confusion and then understanding she nods and as the hill is overrun she takes off into the air with a swoop of her wings and begins to fly away faster and faster as Lulu crouches next to Zario no why why did you do that we need it we need you I need you! Please! Zari! Someone help us! And all of you float above the hill, looking down as a dark shadow seems to creep across the top of the hill. Zario looks up her eyes streaming tears and Lulu looks up in horror as a deep voice says little creature in Bartor help is never far away all you need do is Back. And Lulu flees. Following after the vanishing form of Yao. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, delicious. Thank you. 
Oh, this will sustain me for many a day. And as the vision fades, the form of Zariel, weak, broken, gazing up upon what can only be the ruler of hell himself, Asmodeus. We will end our session for this evening.